Thinking Tackle podcast. Oh, no. I mean, do you ever I know f- what I say, you know, those bastards on The Voice never turned around for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe know, I should have another go. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they got yeah. something wrong there. Yeah, yeah. 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 But no. What, no. You, you know that you've got a shit voice. I know I've got a shit voice. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a bastard, that, though, isn't well, it? Yeah, when yeah, you're singing, yeah. you think, do you know, that sounds really, really It's good. like when you used to go clubbing. That was yeah. the best dancer there. Yes. <laughs> just as well, no one took any videos of you dancing on your way there. In your yeah, but it's how, world. Yeah, but it's how you feel. You can, you, you know, you could feel like John Travolta. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't matter, does it? As long as you feel well. Oh, exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So your your lack of singing ability then is that um, is is if people weren't telling you that, would you would you think possibly that you could? Uh, oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you can't hit the high notes or anything, you know what I mean? So it's just like you know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I was in a band once, and uh, the guy, the guy in the band, uh, I was like his second in command in this band, and uh, we were flipping terrible, mate. Yeah. Oh, we were really, really bad. Um, I mean, we thought we were rock stars at the time. The first <laughs> band I was in, to be fair, out of mind. But this guy was forty years old, dressed like um, Keith Richards from oh, the Stones, yeah. like all the time. Yeah. Leather trousers on. Looks a little bit like Howard Stern, you know, the radio DJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looked just All like him. Long, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, his face was exactly the oh, same. Right. The only difference was he had blonde, light blonde hair instead of dark hair. He was a spitting image of Howard Stern. Right. It's quite a strange looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I got quite well with him. And um, one of our band practices, this always happens like in bands, you, um, you're practicing one afternoon and like rehearsals aren't going well. He goes storming off and he's like sat outside on this park bench and uh, and he's like the leader. Of the, it's his band, mm. right? So we think, oh, well, we'll just play our own songs, you know, while he's uh, calming down a little bit. So we started playing. You know that Poison song, Every Rose Has Its Form? Yeah, yeah. Um, they started like playing the chords. I thought, oh, I can sing that song. I know the words to that. I started singing, right? I went through the whole song. I thought, fucking hell, God, that was like, that was really good, right? <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I finished the song and I thought I'd better go out and see our band leader. So I go out, sit on the bench next to him. So we were just both sat there just looking out. <laughs> and he's just looking straight ahead of him and he goes, um, was that you singing that song? And I went, yeah, it was. And he went, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> 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 oh, well. <laughs> well, I mean, we try. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I've tried since, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you were on about Big Pike as well. Yeah, um, I caught the first thirty pound I caught from uh, Chu. So, which took a while. I took a couple of guests with me, um, and they caught thirty pounders with me. And uh, Pete always gave me stick because it was a trout reservoir pike. Don't count. Blah blah blah. <laughs> anyway, this friend of mine has sent me a picture of this pike that he'd uh, he'd had to do some netting on a lake, and said to me, "This is this lake." I've moved this pike and it's massive. And he sent me a picture. I'm like, wow, that's a big pike. And uh, anyway, I didn't find this out till November. So I had to try and get into this club in the winter. And of course, no one's taking new members much, sort of three quarters of the way through the season. So I had to keep um, pestering this bloke. Eventually, I got in in December. And I worked it out. I had about 10 trips left to the end of the season to try and catch this pike. And I turned up there the first morning got there on on dark found a silver fish in the corner of the lake so i thought that's a good you know start, starting point they're all dimpling on the surface started fishing it wasn't a massive lake and this uh this bloke turned up about two hours later and he came around and he said are you here for that big pike and i said well i'm here pike fishing yeah because they call me the pike king round here oh yeah i said oh yeah yeah he said yeah he said uh i win all the pike matches at farlow's and everywhere else he said and uh that's what I've known. I was sort of, okay, mate, well, good luck. He said, I've been after this fish since November. I said, you know. Anyway, three hours later, I had a small one to start with, and the rod went, wallop, all oh, this feels good. Got it in the net, huge, 32 and a half pound oh. crocodile. Yes. I'm like, yes. One, one, I phoned Pete straight away, so you know that big fat <laughs> trout water pipe that don't count? <laughs> I've got a proper one now. <laughs> And uh, I had to go and get the Pike King and say to him, excuse me, mate, can you come oh, and do some photos? I bet he enjoyed oh. that. <laughs> you would have loved to have seen that. And I went there once. I went there one day, got the ticket, fished it once. 
never Caught went it. back. Caught it. Went. So was he? Was he happy to do the pictures? He was all right, actually. Was he? Was yeah, he was, he was quite um, quite all right. About oh, that's it. all right. Yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't an horrible bloke or anything, but he just made me chuckle when he said. They call me the Pike King round here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pike fishing there actually. Have you? Yeah, it didn't go too well. No, no, no. I might have mentioned it on the podcast before. I went there with my friend Paul, my sort of my long-suffering friend. Do you like where Chew? Chew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's massive, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful place. Well, yeah. you, but you were dead baiting, I take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, we were fly fishing for it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So you can imagine, right? We hired these boats Bit of a out. mess. <laughs> <laughs> My friend says before. Um, have you ever done any fly fishing before? And Paul is just like, you would get on really well with him. He's a chief firefighter. Uh, like, you know, he's a man's man, right? And he's got me, <laughs> like, tagging along with him all the time, right? <laughs> and he goes, have you ever done any fly fishing before? And I said, uh, yes, yeah, yeah I've, done, like, yeah, I've done quite a lot when I was younger in Scotland. And he went, all right, okay, it's just that we're going out on a boat and it's like, it's going to be quite rough out there. And if you've never fly fished before, you're, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, it can get rough out there. <laughs> so we get out there, right? He, he drives the boat out to one of those arms. Um, get the flight get the rod out and I whip a fly and I nearly take his ear off and he said uh, <laughs> you've um, you've never been pike fishing uh, fly fishing before have you and I went <laughs> and then uh, I think we were I think we were um, we were we were fishing until about um, uh, one o'clock in the afternoon and eventually I caught the leader stuck around the uh, the outboard motor and just Ooh. lost all the leader line and uh, that was the end of it didn't go down very well no but we did see a massive dead one there as well it's huge oh yeah it's a massive pike and it's, it's massive everything in chew yeah you know it wouldn't surprise you it's a big carp in it yes you know I remember the, the, uh, talking to the locals and they're saying about massive roach it's done massive perch isn't it that's what I heard though I, I heard that the, um, the the pike in there were, were big because of roach yeah because of the silverfish that's what we yeah. were told it's, yeah. it's such a big head of silverfish in there that's why the pipe was so big it wasn't nothing to do with the trout whether I believe that or not I mean most trout reservoirs have big fat pipe and these pipe were fat as well yes. proper fatties and that but no it took me a long time to catch a good one out of there I went quite a few times and it was a relief really because it was a it was a work up going there because you know I, I work six days a week and it was when I finished there for the day I was going to work that night so I was driving back from Bristol and working that night in London, buying the fruit and veg, and it was like, you know, it was, it was a work up. And when I caught the 32 pounds, there was a lot bigger pike. I saw 38s and I saw a 40 caught, but it was like, that's it, that's enough. That'll how many, me. how many, so I mean, a 32 pounder is, is, I mean, if you see that swimming under the, that's, a, that's an absolute monster, mm. but I mean, how many, how many pikes do you think of that, of that size were in there? Oh, I don't know, at the time, there was, there was a lot. Yeah. You know, there was a lot. They weren't easy to catch though. No. Everyone had the uh, idea that, um, Chew as a piece of cake, and don't get me wrong, some people did go on there and catch a 30 pounder first. It's a bit like time. the Wellington Park thing, isn't yeah. it? You know, you've yeah. got a lake full of big fish, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. But, um, no, it wasn't always a, you know, a, you know, Simon Barton run didn't, and he used to come, he was in the boat when I caught the 32, he caught a 36 pounder in the end out of there, but he went quite a few times, um, before he caught a, yeah. a big one out of there. But that's nice, though, isn't it? You build up to it, yeah, it? yeah, it's, it's a nice day out. You had a breakfast and that, and then you went out in the boat. and as long as the weather's all right. God, I remember that afternoon out on the boat with, with Paul. I mean, it was like, I think I mentioned this. You know when you're out on the boat as well and you need a piss. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and uh, you need to know um, which way to be pissing, don't yeah, you? With yeah. the wind in your face. Unfortunately, well, I, was I, right. I just flopped it out of the side <laughs> until it touched the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little bit more developed, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I didn't I, I I misjudged the wind direction as well, so we ended up having a boat full of piss as well. Which uh, anyway, this is a, a carp fishing podcast. Yes, we're, exactly. We're, we're exactly. Anyway, Dean Fletcher, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Great to have you on the show. Yes, yeah, something different. Yeah, it's a bit different. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a feeling that we might mention Pete Regan a little bit in this. Podcast. Maybe, maybe. So, how, how long have you known Pete for, then, Dean? Twenty years. Oh, twenty years. For my too sins. Long, yeah. <laughs> 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 we said before a, a mutual friend of ours um, said to you on the phone didn't he that it's like thank god you're a friend of Pete's yeah yeah it's, I think it's because I've got a lot of patience and I'm a good listener uh, you've got yeah. to be a good listener you've got to be a good listener yeah don't get me wrong Pete has uh, given me a lot of good information over the years um, fishing wise helped me a lot and uh, he's one of my one of my best mates And I, but I do talk to him nearly every day but as we said earlier it's usually on a journey 
because you're listening, really. <laughs> you're not really talking to I him. mean, do you ever say, oh, Pete, the signal's really bad. Oh, Pete, Pete, Pete. Oh, he's, he's... I wouldn't do that to Pete. No, of course I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been cut, as I said earlier, I've been cut off where um, it's gone on for about 10 minutes and then it's come back in. <laughs> And because I'm driving, I've got earphones on, and he's he's just carrying on. I was he's, say, like, he's only ten minutes further, and he's he's like no further than n- never realised I wasn't even there. <laughs> he's, he's happy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's happy, happy as Larry sitting there rabbiting away. Yeah, and you've heard the same stories. Heard the you? same stories so many times. So you know, yeah, we've got we've got the memento of him there. Which, yeah, um, yeah, we had to. Um, yeah, we had to. Mask. I always cough on that when I go into a swim now because I don't need to see that. Just in case. I don't need what, to see what? that. <laughs> yeah, that's scarred not a, that's, for life. Oh, yes, traumatized. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need to go. You're a good psychologist. I saw him that. last year um, with his trousers and a- uh, pants around his ankles playing a fish <laughs> from yeah. the far bank. Why, why was he? Why like that? He was. He was um, sat on his. Let's say he was sat on his bucket. <laughs> when he had the run oh, right. this is in the winter last year on Wellington Country Park <laughs> and I watched him waddle down to his rod <laughs> waddle <laughs> yeah, played his fish with his trousers and pants he, tried, he pulled him up to his knees a bit he played his fish in got it in the net and then he went back to the paperwork <laughs> before he dealt with the fish like you do <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it never stop him, would it? But it was a long way away, so I couldn't really. I didn't, you know, you didn't need to see things like that up close. So. No, you definitely don't no. want to see that. No, no, <laughs> no. but no, he's, uh, you know, he's a he's a character. Anyway, before we get on with the show, uh, at the start of the show, we always ask uh, uh, our guests for, oh, yes. for a nice gift. Well, and, uh, Danny sort of. Uh, yeah, yeah. I noticed it wasn't that a, that big a gift. Danny that sort you of pissed on uh, my file with his rig the other day. Did so. he? But I've got a rig that I piss on Danny's Oh, rig. right. I've got an idea that... Is this the rig, is it? This is the rig I caught the power on. Wow. And we were talking about rigs, how they don't have to be anything too special, and it couldn't be any more basic than this. Do us a favour, Dean. Just hold it up a little yeah. bit higher for us. So the, yep. Yeah, lovely. To your camera over here. Yeah. That one over there? Yeah, look at that. What it was, was when I went on to Wazing, I started off with uh, hinge stiff rigs, because I'd done really well on other waters with them. Mm. You know, as you've mentioned the other day, the hooking to landing ratio is really good. But they seem to be too... They seem to like a lower bait, a lot smaller bait, a lower to the to the bottom. And there was a bit of crap on the bottom. I didn't like bottom baits on there. Um, it was always pop-ups. And um, I ended up going on to the 360 rig that uh, Dave had shown me, Dave Lane had shown me on Dinton. And uh, but then I started dropping a couple of fish on that, and and these this pattern of hook, I've always used wide gate with a beak point. Um, it's quite a small hook as well. It's a four actually, but it's That's a, a small it's different, four. Isn't yeah, it is a small four, but um, these have never let me down except once when I think I might have lost the parrot before I did right. actually catch it, um, and it snapped. But mm. then I never had any trouble before that. And anyway, my mate Roy Roy Allen, he said to me, uh, "Why are you?" Why are you fucking about with all these fancy rigs? He said, you know, go back to your wide gate. So I said, you're right, you know, just a knot, knotless knot. Um, and I like I liked a decent shot on me because I don't didn't want the pop-up wafting around too much. I like it you now. You're scared the bottom. about putting a shot on there. No, it's braid. Yeah, I know. But I've always had a hang up about that. With mono, yeah, no. Yeah. Went many years ago. Yeah. And the weird thing was, when I... Um, it's fading now, this certainly. When I caught the parrot, I told everyone I'd call it on a... An atomic jelly wire. Oh, uh, but this is actually. We've got a picture up there of the parrot. Actually, oh, yeah. you recognise that? I do. That's a that's a great night shot as well. Actually, oh yeah. Well, it? I was my friend Roy. He's, he's a dab hand of the camera. He said, and he came from Swindon to come and do the photographs I, for me. I've never met Roy. Yeah. I've heard of some of the fish that he's caught. Oh, he's an in the last amazing angler. Months. Yeah, amazing yeah. angler. Yeah. He does it in short time as well. He, he hasn't got a lot of time. He's got four kids. Well, he's like you. Yeah, he's like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's even less than me, really. Mm. He, um, he's got four kids, as I say, and he's angling direct area manager, so he's flat out with his job all the time, dealing with people and stuff. And um, a successful angler. Yeah, so, very successful. But so, so was it through so his anyway, advice and uh, through his advice, and not only that, by the time they were looking for the bait, I was catching a lot of fish on the bait, and um, they were looking for me. That's what I think with, with going on to Peach like Bait. They're looking for you. They are looking for you, you know. Yeah. I've had it on more than one. I went it on Denton Pastures. I've had it on uh, Farriers where once they get on the bait, 
it makes your fishing a lot easier. Mm. They're looking for you to, mm. for that bait. And um, I went on a run of catching a lot of the big, all the A-team on this simple rig. And how long is um, that hook link? It's about what? Nine inches, I suppose. Are you bothered about yeah. hook link length or anything like that? Is that? I sort of r- roughly, I've never it, been that. All, yeah. I've, I've, so you're not, I, you're not. No, I'm not measured. I'm tying them going, that's, that's about right. And the funny thing was, when I was um, catching, the, I, had a, I had a good hit of these fish from this swim called M Beats, and Terry Earn was two swims down, and he came up and took, I think he took pictures of one of the, the big 30s for me, or one of the 40s. And I said, I said, uh, Oh, shit, I've lost my split shot. And he thought I was taking the piss. <laughs> he, he thought I was winding him up. Because he said to someone, bloody telling me his split shot's falling off the hook link and that. But it was. It's just as basic as that. Yeah, it just and, goes um, to show. You should have been on our Rick podcast. No. Uh, have you listened to that? Yeah, yeah. I'd have just thrown that one and gone, what about that, boys? Yeah. And, then, and, yeah, <laughs> and I, that's I, your hook bait as well. But I just, I just think like with a nice soft hook link as well. I mean, it just... It's, it, it sits well, it's presented, it sits over different, you know, types. Of, it's not sticking up, is no, it? No, no, and I clip a bag on there as well. Do you? With L- a, little with mesh a, bag? little mesh bag with yeah. the foam in it. Yeah. So it, it sat up off the lead and then slowly yeah. sat down, but... Oh, no, I'd happily cast that. I think I think the um, I think the booms... Um, booms make a up. massive difference. Oh, it makes a real difference, yeah, though, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember years Can ago using the um, shrink tube in order to the swivels a boom. Yeah. And... Uh, and then when these these uh, kickers came out, yeah, but yeah, yeah. no, there there you go. You you don't need to be. Um, it's faded a bit that hurling, but that's yeah, it? that's a quarter um, dark matter, is it? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to be technical to catch record carp, do you? You don't need to be technical to catch carp. Full stop. No. I think we overcomplicate it a lot of times. So no, that was a Regan boilie on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Regan pop up. Yeah. Well, that, that sounds like the, the the bait thing sounds like the, uh, the the real weapon there, doesn't it? I've, as I said to you before, I, I do one night a week, yeah. Um, and the bait does most of the work for me. I think, yeah. They come looking for me in the end, and um, we've always said it's like uh, home cooking. You know, would you rather eat a lovely roast dinner that your missus has cooked for you, or have a microwave meal? Yeah. John Baker mentioned it the other day, he didn't did. he? He yeah, did. Yeah. But but people but think mate, that bait doesn't make any difference. Um, it makes a massive difference. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. I could be wrong, but... It's got to... I don't know whether sometimes on, on waters it's... Um, whether it's the quality or it's like you just, you're putting so much of it in, whether it's good quality or bad quality. I was the only angler using it on waiting. Yeah. Well, saying that, Roy Roy did for a while and my mate Adam Whittington, he, he caught the parrot on, on the meat. So I knew it liked the meat. He mm. caught it before I did. Um he he um, was buying the meat off off me through Pete. Yeah, and uh, meat baits as well. <sighs> you don't tend to sort of see no. too many people using those, no. do you? Um, I can't think of that many meat baits. The Nutri baits don't do. Is it was it the bo- bollock the bollock the biolex or something? Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. A meat yeah. One, wasn't that was a meat but one. But it's not it's not commonly used. No, is no, it? no. I can't think of any others. Because uh, when when I when I first um, got in contact with Pete. Um, it was through somebody I met in the fruit market. In, I was having a cup of coffee in the calf, and most of the people in um, a lot of the boys in, who work in the market, it's in the Colm Valley, so they carp fish. Is you know, so when I go to work, I talk to the porters <laughs> yeah. about carp fishing. There's Aaron who goes carp fishing. There's Babel who goes carp fishing. You know, you're talking to them about carp fish, so everyone knows. You know, a lot of them don't understand. It is it, a, it's the mecca. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, as far as history goes, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in the cafe, and uh, uh, this this um, lad coming, Glyn, and these other blokes said, "Oh, Dean goes carp fishing." He said, "Come down and had a chat." He said, "Where'd you go?" I said, uh, "Didn't pastures." And he said, "Oh, you must know Gary Verity. He uses Regan's bait." Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I said, "I do know Gary Verity, and Gary Verity is one of the top rods on the lake at the time." Spoke to Gary, he said, I don't use it as it happens, but Pete Regan fishes Harrow with me, and he's off for a month at sea, <laughs> and he comes back and he catches fish from the off every time. He said, if I wasn't using my own bait, I would use his. So I got into contact through uh, this this bloke, through uh, Glyn, through get me some bait through Pete, and um, could put an order in, went and picked it up, and I'd ask for, uh, I've said this story before, but I'd ask for some pop-ups. Oh pit. yeah, I heard this. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and amongst these boilies was a big ball of paste with a, a note on it saying "Rolling yourself, you lousy so and so." And 
I thought I never met this bloke before. Yeah. And, I, and I'm buying bait off him, giving him my money, and he's taking the piss out of me and telling him to roll me own self and don't be so lazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds about right. So I thought, you know, he's <laughs> a the great same, relationship is formed. He's, a, he's on the same wavelength as me, and uh, we've got. He, he does. He does catch a lot of carp, though, doesn't he? Does. I mean, he loses a lot as well. Does it? Oh yeah, yeah. He'd tell you, that he'd, that? He's, he's going to love that. He, he'd tell you now that he'd rather have all the fish he'd lost than the ones he's caught. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the notable ones? Does he? Is he? Does he tell you these? He, he must a, tell you these he stories. He lost a big one on Welly this year, um, and he lost a few on that uh, Essex Waters talked to you about earlier, Coleman's. Yeah. And uh, Savay. Yeah. 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 Well, the one. I mean, does he see these fish? Are they just? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know why either. I don't know if it's because he, you know, he just what, he's always said, yeah, 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 and things, you know, he's, you know, he, he's just always said to me that he's rather rather have the ones he's lost than the ones he's landed, and he's <laughs> had quite a few fifties and all the rest of it. So, yeah, how many fifty pounders has Pete caught? I know he's caught about five this year. Five. This yeah, he caught a brace of fifty pounders Christmas Eve. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it just goes to show. I'm driving to work. I'm going to market, driving up the M4. Couldn't fish that week because I was so busy at work. Pete being retired, phoned me up um, on the on the Wednesday night. I've just had one, and he's not very good at recognising them. And I've always been good at. I know you said. I've this. always been good at recognising fish. Don't know what it is, but it's a lump. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> and he showed me. I said, "That's the one you had in the summer." The small tower mirror. Oh, is it? Oh, nice one. Fifty-five pounds. <laughs> All on his own there. On his own, you know. And then the next night, I'm driving to work again because it's our busy week. At, you know, got another one. How big? Fifty-four. Oh, fuck's sake. You know, I'm working. <laughs> And then and he's phoning me up, telling me he's had a brace of fifty. So what's what's he doing? Is he doing stuff a lot differently to everyone else apart from using a good bait? He's using his bait. Um, I, I I was on Welly the year before Pete came on, and. Um, he got a new flavour, and I said I'd try it on Welly. I, as soon as I smelt it, I knew it was a winner. And uh, he, uh, first time out, I used it. I caught up on the fifties. Yeah. And then, and <laughs> I'd been to France, and um, all my gear is in disarray. And I thought, and, I, and the first week I came back from France, I thought I'm not going to take the piss and go fishing down Welly as soon as I get back. You know, I thought I, you know, I'll spend the weekend, well, the week with my wife and. But she was off to her sister's, so I thought, oh, well. So I just grabbed all the gear and shot, shot down Welly. And uh, I'd left my camera at home, it was charging at home. And uh, so I, I caught this 50 pounder and I was like, wow, you know, they like, like the bait, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I thought, well, you're not allowed to leave the lake till five. So I thought, I'll wait till we can leave and I'll shoot home and get the camera. So I reeled in and went and did all that. And then the next trip I went, I caught four. And the next trip after that, I caught four. And Pete said, if you hadn't reeled in that day, you had the 50 pounder, you could have had probably an, you know, a nice brace of fish or probably a few more. So. Bli- blimey. But yeah, so I knew straight away it's a good bait. Yeah. And you, you, you're on your um, third phase of fishing um, Welly now. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I just <laughs> love the place. I you just, must do. I love the place. I, I fished it um, when it first started as a syndicate. I took, uh, funny enough, I took Steve Renyard's place. I'd, um, I'd had a friend, uh, Laurie, who I used to fish with his dad. Laurie was a little tiny kid when I fished there, and uh, I kept seeing his picture in the Angler's Mail with these lovely leathery mirrors, thinking, I wonder where he's fishing and that. And uh, anyway, phoned me up out in the blue and said, uh, are you interested in joining this Wellington Country Park Syndicate? It was 300 quid. What year was that then? Oh, I'm crap with dates. I think it was in early 90s. 90s, yeah. 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 And um, he said, someone's pulled out if you're interested. Because it used to be day ticket. And the people that he'd picked, the people who fished it a lot on the day ticket. And, uh, yeah, it was great. It was, uh, well, uh, did they, were they getting big there just because just because they were natural growers? Or was it when, when the carp anglers really started fishing that lake? When, that when I... There was a lot of fish in there when I, the first year. They did... They, did um, they, they sold a lot of the fish. They moved a lot. Cause it, originally, they were going to stop the fishing altogether. So they had got rid of some of the fish. There's a big head of tension there at the time. Um, but they were scrape of 30s. The biggest one was 32, I think, the year I joined. Um, but they did... Were they particularly old fish? No, not really. Right, not really. so, quite. so it, it was early on in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, um, and, and I really enjoyed that. I was on there for two or three seasons. Really enjoyed it. Um, caught all the A-team a few times over, except for the turtle. Um, which bugged me. Was that still the, that was the biggest one in there at the time? No, it wasn't. It wasn't the biggest right. one at the time. There was a fish in there called Split Tail, 
and the thick head fish. Um, the thick head fish went on to be the first forty pounder caught by Mickey Gray. Yeah. Um, that was that was the biggest fish in there, and split tail was just a few ounces smaller than it. Caught both those fish on a few occasions. So I sort of thought that's it, and then of course the turtle went on and grew and grew, yeah. and, and it looked amazing yeah. as well. Such a gorgeous looking fish. Yeah. And then I got the opportunity to go back there about six or seven years afterwards. So I did, and I fished it for a season trying to catch the parrot, which is not always easy when you you know. I think that that was um, when I went back. There was. When, when did Danny do the filming on there? I was just going to say that, because you, you were there at that time, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, um, yeah. you got a nice story to say about that as well. Um, what was that? <laughs> that would have been mid, mid-2000s. mid Would it? Yeah. I, he's going to flip and be on the phone now and say, you've got the flipping dates wrong. But yeah, yeah, yeah it was, it was yeah. around that sort of time, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. around mid-2000s. Yeah, when they did the yeah. first underwater filming, when they had the... And the I mean, like, well, the, bit, the first underwater filming on a... A bigger fish venue as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were saying about Lumpy, weren't you? Well, the funny thing was, Dan went in there with he's going to have a pop at me now. But those fish in Denton are, are boily eaters, out and out boily eaters. And uh, Dan was fishing with Pellet and Parkle during the filming and stuff and like that. And uh, Lumpy would come in and sit on his PV bag. Do you remember? Yeah, that was the one just, that kept sitting, kept on, the sitting rig, yeah. on, on the rig. And. Uh, They'd done all the filming and I turned up for my night's fishing and I looked across the stacks and I could see some fish still there. Everyone had gone. And uh, I said to my friend, I said, I'm going to go in the stacks for a few hours. Still fish there. And I was fishing big baits and I was fishing 24 millers. And I went on there and uh, I said to my friend, stay on the top of the stacks, look down, let me know when the fish are gone. And he had a bag of boilies with him. He said, they've just crept off now and I cast straight in the gap, wallop. And then I said to him, throw some baits around it. So he threw about 10, 20 baits around it and that. And as he bought, I put the bobbin on, fished it up tight because you're fishing against a snake, you're locked up. And as he walked round to me, he walked in to swim, the bobbin dropped down, bang, and I landed lumpy at 37 pounds. Nothing, wow. <laughs> and Ian Paul was there, was going, Danny's going to go mad. He's going to go mad. Did, did, did he go mad? I don't know. I didn't see because Danny was He's in the car park. They hadn't left the car park. <laughs> they were still in the car park. Right. And uh, Ian phoned him up. I don't know what he's So, was, So they so. were in Bramble Bay, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they were Bramble in there. So, Bay, it, it, what, yeah. so you were kind of on the right the, the entrance to it, were you? It's, a, it's like a bay yeah. and you fish the opposite side. So you're casting across the overhanging trees. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, they still get in there now. They still, I've caught fish from there last year. From I wonder there. if that fish always does it and sits on top of those rigs like that. Because, I mean, it, it, when you're looking at that on film, it's like, that looks well, like... Well, the a funny thing was, when I rejoined it last year, I thought all the 18 that I'd caught time and time again had gone. And Lumpy was still in there. It did die last year in the end. But I caught it and I thought, that looks like Lumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and, it caught, and it was about the eighth time I'd caught that fish. Well, I used to catch it all the time. Yeah. It was one of the first 30s I caught out there, yeah, and it was an amazing looking fish. Yeah. It was a gorgeous looking thing. But yeah, the second time I re- re- went do you, back... Do you think it was sat on the rig for that purpose on those fellas? You know, to protect its mates from picking it up? No. Right? I don't think they're that clever. Well, <laughs> I'd say that. I've seen, you've seen, I've seen carp banging into each other, pushing them off out of the way when people, you know, people have been fishing in close and stuff. I you think they do that. know there's a rig there? Yeah, probably, but then, you know, you can say how clever are they, you know? It, you know, it's like they say about the mugfish. Are they clever or stupid? Because if they just go around willy-nilly eating everything they can, all the boilers, and occasionally they get caught, they get, because a lot of mugfish don't fight, they come in, get the picture taken, put back, carry on eating. But if they're mugfish, it means, like you said, they're eating a lot all the time, mm. and they're probably getting away with it a lot, a lot more as oh, well. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it's just... But that second season, I went back to catch the parrot, uh, the parrot, the turtle, and... Uh, I caught it with two two weeks left of the season. Did you? And I, I went there on my day off. Well, it wasn't my day off. It was um, bank holiday. And uh, there it is. As I said, it's like an ironing board. Isn't it it? Really, yeah, we're looking at a picture of the parrot now. Yeah, it, yeah it's like an ironing oh, board. Oh, it's a gorgeous it's thing. I had to go back to catch that. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's forty five twelve there. And it did go on to be nearly £60. Yeah, just under 60. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't, I mean, the underwater films really made it well known as well. Yeah, I mean, Dan yeah. kept going on about, yeah, the t- there's yeah. a turtle, there's a turtle. Yeah. But, but it, no, it's a spectacular carp, that, isn't but it? But the, the day I went there, was that was in Bramble Bay as well. It wasn't the snags, it was further around yeah. in the bay. But 
it was a bank holiday and because I worked the weekend um, I, I, I couldn't fish the Friday Saturday night but I could fish the Sunday night to the Monday and I got there and some bloke was a, was in the bay and he just packed up and walked away and he, I said any good he said I have one but the birds are a nightmare in there you're never going to catch anything in there he said the birds are wiping everyone out and everything because it's quite shallow in there. Yeah. and uh I w- walked into the bay and it was it was soup. The water was all coloured up where the fish were in there and that. And uh, yeah, I caught that next morning as he came back the bloke to fish it with his barrow. Did he? I bet. He <laughs> and he landed fished. it for me. I was playing it when he cut turned up. So. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? You were saying as well that w- Welly has always been a boily water as well. You c- without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. You know, I've fished other waters. You know, bits and pieces and stuff like yeah. that. I've always been a boily man myself. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Even uh, they obviously eat particle in there. They're just well, oh, they, they do. Yeah, but, but I'm not saying they don't. But, but they just don't feed as hard on particle as they would do on boilies, or boilies just, make them easier to catch. I think boilies make them easier to catch because boilies are one there, one there, one there, one yeah. there. They got to move to eat them. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and when they're looking for the bait, look at peat season this year. And you know, I, I I could only manage to do sixteen nights this year because of COVID. Um, I caught still caught seventeen fish and a fifty pounder and five forties. Pete caught bloody loads, you know. So what does so what does Regan do at the start of a session? Then is he is he is he putting a lot of bait out at the start? And um, is it and is he, he doesn't is he go fishing, mad, Is he fishing he tight or is he sp- really spreading it around? He likes to spread it about. He likes a tennis court size. So when we area. did a podcast with him, we couldn't get into this stuff, Tob, could we? He was like, he was off on his like, he was off on his <laughs> like, life that. journey. Yeah, and, uh, someone, <laughs> someone asked me if I'd be interested in doing a podcast with Pete, and he was like, "What's the point? I'd just be saying like, oh. <laughs> you'd just be in the audience." <laughs> no, yeah. We, we yeah, we thought the best option in the end was the was the MD. You know, it's like keep him in order a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Dad was. Swe- in there, wasn't he? Oh, mate. <laughs> Few people picked up on some of his facial expressions in the background. I can see him sitting there thinking, oh, don't go down, down that avenue. Oh, there were a few times where Damon said, Look, Pete, you're, you're, Pete, can you just explain what you're just, you know, he was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we didn't get into his actual, we didn't get too much into his fishing. And he's pretty, I mean, he's, he's modest with that as well. He doesn't, he, yeah, yeah, he, he yeah. didn't come on the show to show off all his, all his captures, no, all no, the pictures. No. But um, so is he, is he, is he putting a lot of bait out and fishing tight and. Uh, Takes a lot of bait and, and fishes like a tennis court area. Does it? And spreads it out, yeah. I mean, to, 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 to see him fishing, does it, does it look anything out of the ordinary? No. No. Right. He gets just his, his pheromones. <laughs> is it just, yeah, it's just he's got that. It's Maureen roll in his bait. It's, it's Maureen's, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maureen, touch my hands and everything before we go fishing. <laughs> but no, that is so, isn't it? It's like, you know, when you're seeing somebody turn up and, uh, you know, catch that quantity. Are you two a, a bit of a partnership as well on there? Do you, do you well, the thing is, over the years, I've very rarely fished with Pete yeah. because we've been on different waters. I take him as guests. I've taken the guests at Dinton and I think he insulted every single person in the syndicate <laughs> and really insulted some of them where well, it's it's cringe the way worthy. he yeah, yeah 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 because he's a part he was chatting up the women walking around and saying three of us three of you girls got a big tent here and they're like oh all these old girls you know are running all <laughs> so were they interested but he gets in with people it? whatever place i have fished with him like ways in mark Gibbs, who runs that lovely bloke yeah. runs a superb fishery they're on the phone all the time when we fished in and he moves swims, he's in the golf bag with Simon Bartlam, giving it all that as he went past with all his gear in the back <laughs> no. and we're all pushing barrens around. You don't even know him in five minutes. Jeez. He's just got gift of the gab, isn't he? Yeah, and he's one of these people, if he, if he, if he likes you, 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 sort of, you get a feeling straight away, don't you? And if he doesn't like you, he probably... Oh, mate, he's brutal. Brutal. I've been with him on the cons, sat there, and someone's been chatting, chatting, and he's gone... Right, you've been here long enough. Now, fuck off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and I've cringed and gone like that. You know when people are in your swim and they're chatting away and too long and you think, oh, I have so- yeah, an embarrassing silence I mean, now. they would be in the mice swim for just eight hours and they would just go with so, they- so it'd be like an embarrassing silence yeah. and you think, you know, I'd rather be on my own. But you haven't, you're not going to say it, are you? He does. Oh, yeah. You've been here too long, piss off, mate. You've got to admire that, really, haven't you? Because a lot of people just He's wouldn't. honest. He's <laughs> right. honest. He says it as he sees it, and he doesn't He doesn't uh, 
bat an eyelid. I can see how him and my old man really get on. Now. Yeah, yeah, got exactly. A lot in yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can't, uh, yeah. I don't know how that. It, it works like the rest of us, I suppose. You know, Damo is. Well, you never know. A few words, the thing is, Pete, so, uh, you, you, you've um, if you, if you've upset him or anything like that, you you know you know straight away. You're not. Yeah. He's not keeping anything back because he just tells it as it is, yeah. which I love. I'd rather everyone was like that. Everyone be honest. But um, we we said when we went over Pete's house. I mean, he's a, he thinks a lot of his close friends. I think he's got this group. He's got this small group of friends around mm. him, and you can see. I mean, he's got um, he's got your record certificate up on the framed in his on his staircase. I think isn't right, it yeah. in his house? Yeah, Oz's as well. Yeah, you know. I mean, that ain't the sort of thing that I would do. To be fair, no, I mean, it, no. it, obviously, there's a lot of sentiment. There. He's got a lot of carp history stuff in his, he in loves his book collection, he, second to none. Yeah, he and, loves that, doesn't he? And, uh, so you and you and him fishing on Welly together. So this is the first time you actually. Uh, we fished um, that lake in Essex, Coleman's for a little bit. I, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't do a lot of time, like you know. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, we were fishing. Uh, one day we're down there, and it was a red hot day, and we're next door to each other. And I, I don't know if you've had this, Toby, where he comes around, he digs you in the ribs, he gives you a good old punch in yeah, the ribs. Yeah, he used to do that to me when yeah, I was about exactly, 10 years yeah. old. Yeah, well, he still does it to me. <laughs> Is that why you got into fighting, Toby? Just it's to sort of defend, defend yourself from yeah. Pete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I took offence to it, you know, and I, as you know, I used to do a bit of judo and stuff. And I said, I'll show you some throws. And I got, I got him, <laughs> I got him over on his back, and I got him on on, on his front, and we bounced. I was straddled across him, and I started pulling the airs out of his back, and he's squealing like a little pig. Oh, I'd love to see that. And yeah. one of the bailiffs, when we packed up and moved, said, "Were you two fighting the other uh, earlier on the other side of the lake?" And he's like, "Yeah, we had a little bit of a wrestle." He said, "How old are you two? And he's like sixty-five at the time. <laughs> 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 was he uh, was he gracious in defeat? No, he's never gracious in defeat. No, he's still swinging when you get off him. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> Would you ever win an argument with him? No. No. He's always got a last word. Yes. I know where I stand with that. No, yeah. no chance. Yeah. And if he if he's if he's losing amount of times I've been with him and he said things and he said things about other people and I think, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> yeah, he's you very quick witted, oh, isn't he? You know, he just comes straight out. He had his um jab the other day. And the doctor said to me, "You're on any other, on any other medication?" He said, he said "Yeah, Viagra." <laughs> First thing come out of his mouth without even. <laughs> He'd say it without smiling or laughing. He said, either, "He said he? I didn't even think of that. I didn't have it planned. It just comes or... straight out of my mouth." <laughs> and it's in the delivery as well, isn't He's it? He's like that all the time. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. He had a bloke come. Um, he stopped. We stopped. Uh, my friend Glyn and him stopped for a meal at a cafe, and this bloke was serving them. And this bloke was a really big fat bloke, and he put the food down. And Pete said, "You like your food, then?" <laughs> and he said, "I got, an, I got, I got an overactive." And before he could say anything else, Pete said, "Knife and fork." This <laughs> 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 blows. No, I got an overactive thyroid, and of course they're dying by then, you know. Do you know what? He's one of them as well. It's like if nobody else laughs, it doesn't matter because he's laughing. Oh, I've just been, I've the been in anyway. the boats. I've been on the Norfolk Broads with him, and he's been insulting other people in the boats going past. And that, you know, yeah. we went past a uh, little boat there's three blokes and the bloke in the middle was a big fat bloke and two blokes on either side and Pete said, how come you're sat in the middle there mate <laughs> this bloke's going I might be fat mate but I have got feelings <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh dear it's, it's, it's old school humour as well yeah, isn't it yeah. you know and, uh, oh yeah you wouldn't get away with a lot of you know yeah. snowflakes these days and yeah. that it, uh, yeah. Dean as well as like catching a few big fish along the way as well you, you don't have an awful lot of time to go fishing either, do you? No, I've I've never had a lot of time to go fishing. Um, one night a week is pretty much what I do. Um, but as I said in the past, you know, I, you look forward to it every week and it soon comes around once a week, you know. Um, I would like more time and I'm, my plan is as I get older, hopefully to get, you know, a lot. Be nice to have two nights. Yeah, <laughs> make up for the mistake from the first night when you you could move. Well, well, I mean, what a breath of, breath of fresh air that is, because to to a lot of people, isn't it? You know, that the, there's always this expectation that, especially if you're catching record sized carp, that you're spending a lot of time on the lake. Yeah, I mean, when I when I joined Ways in, because um, I, I, as I said to you before, I like other sorts of fishing, um, but because the parrot is so big, I knew. I had no, I was never going to get a chance probably to fish for a fish as big. So every time I went fishing, I was on Cranwells through the winter, through the summer, spring, whatever. 
and yeah, every every week it was like, am I going to catch it? <laughs> but it took me three years. Well, I mean, that's pretty quick. quick. <laughs> Didn't you say as well that your um, your ticket for that coincided with was it was it with your 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 now wife? Yes, yes. When I met Vanessa, I, I think I met Vanessa about a month beforehand, and I'd I'd been married before, well, divorced, then had about eight years being single, which is fantastic. I had no intention of getting married again or even having a so girlfriend. So how old were you when you met Vanessa? 50. So there's yeah. hope for all of us, mate. Well, exactly, mate. You know, yeah. She is a girl of my dreams. Without A very saying, attractive woman as well. Well, you've seen the photographs seen of, her. of her. She's yep. a stunning looking woman. I don't know what she's doing with me, but... Um, Charisma, isn't it? She's, she's not only beautiful on the outside, she's beautiful on the inside as well. She's such a kind person, great mother. And I, I wouldn't have... Um, I, I wouldn't have bothered with a woman if you'd just been as not as special as Vanessa so um so is that a dilemma for you then you <laughs> well know, at the time it was I sort of um I knew I knew I was batting above my with Vanessa um but then the ways and ticket came out and I had to talk to myself and say listen take it easy don't go fishing mad just you know tunnel vision you've got a girlfriend now who she's a keeper um just calm down and uh, just do your one night a week and because uh, because I, I you know I still get holidays and I used to take all my holidays chasing it and all the rest of it but but uh, yeah so yeah it, it worked does out. That, right, does that does that worry when you meet? I mean, so you meet the girl of your dreams, right? Mm. And you're a mad keen car pangler. Does it does it worry that you, you, at some point you need to explain that to them that you know I, I need I've to always be doing whenever this. I go if any, if any old carp fisherman who's in who's got the fever always explain to their girlfriend look I go fishing once you don't want to surprise them with it do you and say well you've been going out all night and all day what's going on you got to tell them exactly what you do and um, and then, but, I mean, and then you, you prepare gotta, them for it yeah you've got to prepare them. <laughs> but if you, you go on right um, I mean you go on these dating websites and some of these women actually write on there I don't want to see any pictures of guys holding fish really yeah I've never been on one so uh, I know I've that. had a little bit of experience <laughs> Uh, it's all coming out now. Well, it, I mean, it was a short bit of experience. <laughs> Sorry, this podcast isn't about me. But I mean, I was like, we, we, um, I, I tried online dating at the start of last year, right? And it took me, it took me eight months to put a picture up. I really did not. I just don't want to meet somebody like that. Mm. I, I really don't want to meet someone like that. No. And, um, but I did. Uh, I put my, put my picture up. This was in March last year. And uh, I went on a date with a, a concert pianist who'd never been out with anyone. She was, well, yeah, she was a... Get you. <laughs> I went out with a concert <laughs> pianist. I met, um, I met a girl that produced TV programs. And I met this other girl that I'm still in contact with now, but she moved back to Hong Kong because of coronavirus. Of no, well, it, it would have been, wouldn't it, if she had had a chance. But, but so, so, I, so, I, so, I, so I, I got into it for, for about two weeks and then coronavirus hit. No. And that was that was the end of it again. Well, you better get going again. Well, no, but this is what I mean. So this is my experience with. I've I read a few profiles from these girls and all women, um, and they stipulated no fish pictures, <laughs> and it's like they're flipping. I've right. been in trouble then. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if you present a picture, look at this. This is the parrot. This is the biggest carp in the country. They ain't going to be that impressed. No. Why would they? Are they? Be? I mean, my missus when I caught it. She was pleased I caught it because I stopped talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then you're on, like, you're on to the next one. <laughs> well, you've always got the next fish, but it's, nothing's going to be as as flat out like I was for that fish. Yeah. It's, um, but she understands I go fishing every week. She knows if I don't go fishing every week, I'm not happy. And she's good as gold with it, you know? So, you, and now, so you've married her now. And, yeah, I got uh, married last year, yeah. And you've caught the parrot. I caught the parrot. But you've still got this... A new, I mean, demanding sort of career. Yeah, yeah. You know, as well. So, yeah, I, I, I run my own business with my brother. I've been running my own business for 30 years now. Worked for my dad before that. Always been a greengrocer. But and, it, it uh, involves getting up in the middle of the night and... Uh, it involves getting up in the middle of the night and uh, like 15-hour days. Why would you want to do that? Because it's all I know, really. You grow up doing it. Uh, I hated school. I'd never had any qualifications when I left school. Um, my dad had a greengrocer's shop, so uh, I automatically fell, fell into that. Did that for for a few years. Then we, then the supermarket started turning up, and uh, the shop trade was going down. So we uh, we could see that coming. So we brought a farm, 
my dad had to borrow a lot of money, bridging loans and all the rest of it. He brought 20 acres with plans, planning permission for a house and a few barns on it and a cow and some goats. And uh, we run a wholesale green grocery business from one of the sheds. And uh, we served a few schools and that then. And, and then it progressed from there, really. It's, um, then it turned into a garden centre. And then my brother's um, boy was joining the army. He dislocated his knee so he couldn't join the army. So we had to find some work for him, really. So we started a little market stall. And this is like years and years afterwards. And, uh, and it became very successful, the market stall. And uh, so we thought we'd open a little shop and try that. That's gone from strength to strength. We've just finished an extension now on the shop. And we're just getting busier and busier. I think people have realised, because with fruit and veg, there's no shortcuts. You need to go to work every night to buy it fresh every night. It comes off the lorries, go in the market, onto my lorry, and then I sell it. Supermarkets can't compete with that. It has to go back to there, get packaged, then go to the next place, depot, then it's shipped all around the country. We've had customers come into our shop, buy our stuff, and then say, well, your stuff lasts for like two weeks in our fridge. Supermarket stuff lasts two days. Yeah. And you're like, well, you know, it's, it's fresh. Mm. That's why. It's, it's no shortcuts in green grocery. You've got to go to work every night. You've got to buy fresh, bring it back, sell it. You can't buy tons of it because it'll go off. You have to go every night and buy it fresh and like that. So but, but there, like, yeah. But there are, I mean, so there so are... I'm lucky I've got my brother. I've got friends in market who haven't got a brother as a business partner. They have to go every night and work seven days a week. And you said your dad still works seven my days a week. My dad's 82 and he's, um, he works seven days a week. He ran Because the, the farm has got very successful now. It's a, it's a busy garden centre. And um, he could sit on his laurels. He takes enough rent money off the other people in there and just take that. But he's... Uh, although he, he, my dad remarried... Um, he split up with my mum when I was 16, and he remarried, and I've got a stepbrother and stepsister, Ben and Megan. Um, Megan's 30 now, and Ben's about 25. They're both successful at judo, and uh, Ben's in the top 10 in the world. My sister won the Commonwealth Games, that's and that's what they do. They do training yeah. every day. So my dad is working because he's, you know, looking, keeping them uh, in their judo kits. And, so your dad uh, was into judo? My dad was into judo a little bit. He got me and my brother, brother. I've got two brothers, Vic and Stuart, into it um, when we was about 11. And we were lucky enough that the judo club we went to was the most successful judo club in the country at the time. The trainer was the best trainer. It was Bracknell Judo Club. And then they brought some land and, and it turned into Pinewood Judo Club. And, uh, yeah, we just took to it. It's... Uh, it was I'll tell you, you remind me. So, I mean, cause, so you attribute where you were training in judo to, to, to the club that you were actually training at. Um, there's a book called Bounce. I don't know. It's, it's, it's about a table tennis player. Right. And uh, he, he qualified for um, the Sydney Olympics, I think it was. And it was exactly the same thing as what you're talking about. Mm. He started playing table tennis when he was uh, at school. And the school sports teacher said, oh, if you want to play table tennis, you need to join this club. And this, this club, I can't remember whereabouts in the country it was, was responsible for representing like the majority mm. of all the best table it, tennis players. This was just down to one man, Don Werner. He was the best trainer. He was brutal as well. He's, he, you know, he wouldn't take anything from it. He was very, very... Well, judo is very strict. You don't talk back to the uh, referees or the, or, the, or the teacher at judo. And... Um, yeah, we all. I I fought for England a few occasions and did the international. Went to other countries and did some fighting. Yeah, that's pretty but, incredible. That is. But in my day, I was doing the training and and going to competitions and all the rest of it, and then going back and doing a twelve hour day in the shop. <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> Whereas yeah. my brother and sister, I mean Ben, he's he's a monster now. He's you know he's tenth he's, in the world. He's, no, he's in the top ten. He's about number six, I think six yeah. or seven. He just broke his leg in Israel. You, know, you need to Google him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and they're my 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 stepbrother and sister, and they're, and they're lovely people. You know, they they, you know, I couldn't wish for a better stepbrother and sister. They're yeah. uh, very successful at this sport. Very, you know, and the, and the plan is that they will carry on the farm with my uh, take over from my dad. Yeah, yeah. And they finish doing the judo. So yeah, but I mean, it sort of teaches you, like you say, it teaches you discipline. You seem to like have a very sort of structured life as well. I've always been the same. I used to teach judo. I did. I taught judo for about 15 years to yeah. kids from from uh, 5 to 16. I used to do it every Friday night after work. 
And uh, it's funny because now you see them with their own families and their own children <laughs> saying, oh, is, you know, judo still going on. And I, no, I packed up a long time so you ago. Got to, <laughs> so what was the height? So you get to a, like a black belt and then you and then you can become a, an instructor after that? Or? No, I just took it on as a friend was doing it before me from the club and said, I'm, I'm, you know, would you like to carry on from me? And uh, I took it on from there. So are you any good now still? I'll still show you a few moves. Yeah, Ask I'm Pete. Sure, no. I'll show you Pete a few moves. <laughs> yeah, we need to get Regan in here. Like that, right? well, that's, that's, that's a good demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I done that when I was younger briefly, but it, it didn't... Um, it, well, I've got two knackered knees now, you know, yeah. through work and judo. I had operations on my knees. When I was 16, it, it, it you know, curtailed my judo career pretty, pretty I finished, but in my 20s. It's pretty demanding on the body, isn't it? Something yeah, like yeah. And I say, yeah. I, I I don't know whether I had weak knees or whatever it's from the judo, but uh, I had early cartilage operations r- right up to my 40s. So I've always had problems with my knees. Mm. The thing is, with knees, once they go, I spoke to um, a friend of my parents, an orthopaedic surgeon. He said, once, he said, the amount of times they see a knee come into the surgery, mm. and he just said, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. Well, that's what I've just had, actually. I, I, I've had, I had some work done last year on the other knee. Mm. And they took x-rays of the other li- ni- knee and he said, "There's it's bone on bone. You've got to put up with the... He said, how bad is it? Can you put up with the pain? I said, well, I have to, won't I? You can wheel a bone around the legs. It's called, called bone edema, isn't it? Yeah. Where the, bone, the bone swells up. And, I'm, I'm uh, like it at work now. I can work like seven hours mm. and then it starts to properly hurt. Does it? It just then, throbs, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's essentially, yeah, the bone's swelling up. It's like like it would any injury, except it's the bone itself. So, yeah, yeah it's after time it comes to really That's why I'd like to take things a bit easier, but it's, <laughs> it's not working out. We're getting busier and busier. Yeah. So, it's, uh, so you've, got yeah. your, you've got your war, war wounds then yeah. for, from that. But yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, um, do, 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 I mean, do you ever think with your like work stuff that's like, you know, if I could just give myself a little bit more time, I could do more fishing? I mean, it is. Oh, that's a plan. You know, that's a plan. A bit more time with the missus and a bit more time fishing. Yeah. We, we have, I have it taken my foot off the gas a bit. Um, I do get a bit more time now. Mm. So it's, uh, mm. we're getting there. So do you have a structured campaign for when you want to fish a lake? Do you, like, I mean, so for, you know, like at Welly at the moment, do you, do you, have you got a target on there or? Yeah, I've got a target. Uh, I like to catch that willow, which is the biggest one. And Tom, your friend Tom, he got me back on there, really. He said to me, have you ever thought going back to Welly? I said, no, mate, I've, I've, you know, I think I've pretty much caught what I wanted out there over the years. And then he told me what was in there and they'd had a fish kill and they'd lost most of the big ones. Mm. And that was most of the fish that I'd caught before anyway. And the ones that were left are ones that I hadn't caught and had grown on and on and on. And he said a couple of them could go 60 pounds. He said, there's not many people caught a cut of 60 pounders. No. And I said, yeah, that's a point. And I looked into it and that, and I put my name down and rejoined. And I've loved it back there. Mm. It's, a, it's a really relaxed uh, syndicate. Everyone's sound. Well, I know our friend said as well, he was talking to me about it. And he's not the sort of person that you would necessarily associate with that lake. But he said, when you hook one chap, it's like you hook one. It feels like the ground's moving. Oh, mate, they're, they're beasts. <laughs> it's... It, at the moment, there's very little weed in there. It's shallow, and they fight like hell, you know. Yeah. And, it, and it's and it is, you know, yeah, big big fish. So, do you think that fish kill on there? Is it is it just brought those those other fish on now? I think because it always easy. does, doesn't it? I think when when you lose like the biggest fish in the lake, another one to step up. It always seems to be the way. I mean, at one stage, there's over twenty, over fifty pounds in there. So, how many over fifty pounds? About now? six now. Right, and when the uh, so the fish kill pretty much wiped out most of those fifty pounders, did it? it? It did a lot of them. I think they had they lost sort of half of them, and then they lost about three or four um, a and couple of years. And ago. you've had another six fifties come through since then. They they were already sixties, so uh, fifties, sorry, fifties, yeah, yeah. But 60s, they're but yeah. they're getting bigger. They're yeah. getting bigger. Yeah, you know, the ones peak caught in the winter. That's like their biggest weights. Um, yeah, I mean, Jamie and the lads, is Charlie, the, the bailiff on there, and Ken and that, they all did a great job. It's, it's really well run. It's a real nice fishery, you know. Would they would they put, are they putting stock fish in there? Yeah, they're slightly putting uh, 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 Dinton fish. Um, right. They put from Simon Dinton. Uh, but they're doing it the right way. They're putting in 10, and then another year they put another 10 in, rather than, you know what it's like with these old fish, you don't put... 50 stock is in because well, when it comes to spawning they, they harass just, the hell out of them kill them they do, basically they, they do don't they I mem- s- remember a friend of mine saying, telling me that um, he stopped it with some small fish one of his lakes and he saw one of the big old mirrors coming around with like six little tiny mouths banging into the side of it they, they can't, can't cope, much of they that they can't cope with no, that can they no, no. so you've got to be mindful the fish needs to be probably like a, you know if they're 
if they're like middle age or, or over, it's like you, yeah, you, you yeah, are you're, yeah. you are rolling the dice a little oh, bit yeah, there, aren't yeah. you? How, yeah. are the, how are the stockfish getting on in there? Uh, they've only, there's only been a few put in recently, the last couple of years, really. Right. So they're all growing. Everything grows massive in Welly. They, I have no doubt that those fish will be massive. Well, why do you think that is in that lake? Uh, it's a lake. It's a lake. Uh, a f- you know, a um, friend of mine says there's massive bloodworm beds in there. They're the biggest bloodworms he's ever seen. It's shallow. It's big. It's got water coming in one end, going out the other end. Fresh water. Which always helps. Mm. Mm. Um and uh, it's always, but you know, people used to say, oh, it's welly strain of fish. It's, uh, but those dinks had never grown that big anywhere else. Um, they're the same fish that are in the Yateley Match Lake and places like that. Um, and, and then the ghost carp have gone over 50 pound, and then the suttons have gone over 50 pound. Whatever they are. Yeah. And Denton fish are known for growing big anyway, yeah. so there's no reason why those fish won't go over 50 pounds mm. in the future. So. Are, they, uh, are the small fish getting caught very often? I had a couple in the winter. Um, although me and Pete were being quiet about our <laughs> catches in the You winter. were actually, weren't you? We were being quiet about it, although it was Mission Impossible with Pete. Well, well, Pete would say, yeah, keep these quiet, keep these quiet. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know, whatever. He was telling me off. <laughs> he was saying, oh, I won't tell anyone, even yeah. tell Maureen. And then he caught a couple of 50 pounders in a different ball game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but we had to stop then anyway because of, um, because of COVID. And, uh, did you Christmas. did you um, did you guys find the fish at a certain end of the lake or a certain part of the lake? We found an area they were in, and uh, and you could fish it from free swims. And uh, what was it? A, a, was it a, a, a well-known area of the lake? Yeah, or? pretty much everyone knows it's a good area yeah. in the winter. And uh, and there were there some years they've been different places. You know, I remember Daryl telling me they had somewhere different one year. So it's all um, you know, horses of courses really. You should use your eyes. That's always to it. But you were catching that, so over what period of time were you catching regularly off that, that area? Every time we went, really. Were you? Yeah. And it only stopped, what, when the water, after Christmas, when it got a bit colder, or? No, after Christmas, the COVID That's thing came and stopped us travelling, so. And you said Pete had one at Christmas Eve, so Pete, he Christmas was catching Eve. right up until yeah, that Yeah, yeah, and then after Christmas, they stopped it, didn't they, so. Bloody hell. I was gutted, because I had to yeah. work Christmas, because we were so busy in the shop. Yeah. Christmas. And, and um, bait and stuff like that. We put in the bait, bait in. Lots of bait. See, this is the... Co- Against everything people tell you in winter. Yeah. These big baits that you like using. Oh, I love big baits, yeah. So these are the baits that you were putting in. Yeah, 22 millers we were using. I mean, it goes against everything that you would expect. Oh, you did it at Denton. I've used it at Farriers. I've used all the waters I've fished. I've used big baits. You still catch double-figure carp on them, but it's just... Uh, I think it's, you know... One, I think... The boilies are better, bigger, because there's more paste in it than you're not boiling the uh, life no, Pete said this before. Yeah, that that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, the more goodness is in the bait. But what about in the winter, though? When I mean, they're, they're big baits. It's a, it's a lot for the fish to be eating. Yeah, it doesn't seem to make... But, well, it doesn't. Pete caught those two um, 50s. He said, regularly put about six kilos out. Six kilos. Mm. Blimey. So would you guys... You get you go in there, what, bait up afterwards as well, or...? Well... It's a bit difficult and well. You don't want to fill it in before somebody else follows you, and it's not, you yeah, know, it's, it's not, not the thing to not do. Not the thing to do. But we, I wouldn't start off with six kilos. You know, you'd start off with maybe a kilo, but then you catch one and you put another kilo out, and then another one, another couple of kilos, and yeah, so on. You know, so. Uh, and do, but, do, 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 do you think so they were just uh, they were just on that bait, <coughs> were they? Yeah. No, nothing else. They no. were following you guys around, like you said. They loved that bait. Yeah, yeah, they love that bait. It's, uh, it's, I know it had previous, um, a couple of friends of mine, uh, Roy, we spoke about before, and James Pierce, they'd used Pete's um, nut mix on there, which was the same base mix, just a different flavour, and they'd done very well on it. And the welly fish do like a nut mix. They've always liked a nut mix on there. And uh, and you can't get more nut mix than Pete's nut mix because he actually grinds they are nuts. the nuts down. He'd he, he phone me up and say, listen to this. <laughs> this is all the peanuts going in and this is all the tiger nuts going in being ground. <laughs> Not other bait companies do this. This is proper own cookie boy. He gets a bit excited about that, does he? Well, he likes, you know, you know. do you know how much he's cost me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pete, I'm surprised Pete could sell a lot more bait, couldn't he, potentially? Pete just makes bait for his friends and it's just a hobby for Pete. And it's and it's a way of him getting all these ingredients for his own bait, so he can buy quantities of it and yeah. keep the suppliers happy. Pete well, you, start, you Pete don't want to sell too much bait, do you? To other I people, don't. do you? No. You don't want everyone on there using no, it. No, do you? no, no. It's always been my edge. You know, it's only since he's become a bit more famous that, uh, yeah. and he's got on these other waters. But you know that that it's like the most 
baitiest water I've ever fished is Dinton Pass with White Swan. And once we got the fish on Pete's bait, it became easy. And I'd struggled for quite a few years on there. You'd get a little run of fish and then it'd stop for no reason. And um, his mate bait made all the difference. Mm. It's, uh, we was three of us on it and we all caught. And, we, and of course, I'm doing one night a week. I'm not living down there like a lot of them were. No. And we, we really end up being top rod with, you know. I like, I like what you said with um, like, like, like with Daryl. So da- Daryl would be down on Welly then and you, you would get a bite in the morning and you would... You go out, hit the rod. You're half asleep, and and Daryl. I've been be working stood. on it, and Daryl's like a hawk, you know. We, you see the videos of him, and he's exactly saying down the lake. He's not doing it for show. He's watching that water, twenty four seven. He's, you know, he's he was uh, first light. He's waded out in the lake, and c- I'm c- far, c- fast as. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, so this is like this, this is like yin and yang, isn't it? So, so yeah, I've been working all night, and I've, you know, I've, I've, because as I say, I've, I've got to work at <clears throat> about midnight. And it's not till one o'clock the next day I get to the lake to fish to do my night. So I'm I'm struggling to stay awake before it gets dark, and then when it does get dark, I'm spark out. And uh, yeah, I like that. I don't get up at the first light to watch the water. I'm out like a lot, you know. I'm I'm catching up on the sleep because I'm going to work again that night. When I get back from the lake, I'm back in bed about four o'clock in the afternoon to start again. So um, what are you doing? I mean, is it just your... Just, uh, Regan should be selling a lot more bait then, shouldn't he? He should be mass producing this and becoming a millionaire off, off, off the We don't need the money. He's a millionaire set. anyway, I should imagine. <laughs> and I'm being serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I was, so I mean, is it, so you attribute... It's a hobby for Pete. He enjoys his light. A friend of ours is on the bait with us, uh, Ryan, and they've just opened Welly. And... Um, First night, he's just had a 48-pound ghosty. Beat his PB. He's phoned up Pete, chuffed his to bits, and Pete said, I get a real kick out of that. That's what I do it for. That bloke's phoned up, beating his PB on my bait, and he's chuffed to bits. Yeah. And uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, I've had I've had bait deal. I, I know enough people through fishing all the, the venues and all the rest of it. I've been offered bait and stuff and that, and, you know, cheap and free and... You know, I'm just not interested, you know. I pay Pete the same as everybody else does. If you, would you always have to use boilies fishing? Or, I mean, you're adaptable as well. I'm I mean, adaptable, you, yeah. yeah. I've, yeah. You know, I've caught fish on tiger nuts the last couple of years from other waters and stuff. And that, mm. where, where I fished one place in the margins where I found a lovely little spot on the edge and the coots were, were a nightmare on it. And I, I fished a tiger nut because I knew they could keep picking it up and dropping it and mm. it wouldn't come off or, or uh, get pecked off. Like mm. my boardy would do and caught fish like that, but not very often, <laughs> I must no. admit. It's mainly boardies. I've caught all my big fish on boardies. And we we said with Daryl as well, he caught he caught on tigers in the yeah. end. Well, he, yeah. I mean, that surprised you because it's such a, such a dominant boardie. Without water. a doubt, yeah, it did surprise me. Um, but he's a very very good angler, and he was fishing very accurate at range. And he, he's a very particular angler. He, he's different gravy, you know. He um he catches everywhere he goes, doesn't he? So I'm not you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, me and Pete did all right. We were all right. Well, we? no, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, that's the contrast, isn't it, on a lake like that where you've got, you know, you've got a lot of experienced anglers fishing, mm. and um, you know, it's not always one way that sort no. of rolls the roost, is it? No. You know, but um, but you you guys would just carry on fishing on there and just carry on, you know, pretty much what what you're doing yeah, there. Exactly. I take yeah. It. Yeah. With the boilies and uh, yeah, yeah, getting plenty of action. Yeah. So it's all good. Have you always fished in the Reading area? Because that's where you're. Uh, when I first got divorced, I had a bit more time because because I've always I've had the uh, the Sunday off um, with my wife or my girlfriend or whatever in the, at the time and um, and I, I've been one day in the week. I always used to say to them, I pay someone to come and work for me that day so I can go fishing. It's not for anything else, <laughs> not for a day out shopping. Yeah. Anything that's my that's my night's fishing and. Um, that's that's all, always been the way, but uh, sorry, what was the question? Yeah, no, no, it was, we, we we were saying about fishing in the Reading area, weren't we? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so when when I um, got divorced, I, I had Sunday, so I could do a Saturday night as well. So I, I did spread my wings a bit there. I fished Essex and stuff like that, a couple of lakes in Essex, and uh, I used to like my pipe fishing in the winter. I used to go up to the River Wye and that, and travel a bit further. Yeah, but we're so lucky in Reading. The waters around us. You, you could got, you could fish a lifetime around there. Yeah, I still haven't fished them all. You know. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you've got the highest concentration of big carp in the country in that, Probably, that, that area at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. 
So you say you're you're lucky in that respect that you're based in the in the right place. But I guess like I say, never used to be. Yeah. You know, when I first started carp fishing, it wasn't you know in the eighties. It mm. was uh, very few lakes. I mean, I know we had Yately down the road, which wasn't far. But other than Yately, it was California Lake and a few in the ready mortars. So California Lake. Um, so what you were fishing for twenty pounders and stuff in well, those days? We weren't even twenty pounders. I know because in them days you didn't know what was in the lakes. Mm. You knew carp were in the lakes, and it wasn't until we got on the hair rig in eighty three, I think it was. Um, Did you say the Dempsey Terry Dempsey? It wasn't Terry. It was his mates. He had two mates turned up from the Darren Valley, and I was fishing further down from them. And I said to my mate, "Look at those boys up there. They've got the rod tips up in the air." Lines as tight as anything into clips on the by the spigot with the match. This is stick. exactly what Jerry was saying to us, actually. Oh, yeah. was he? So this is there's a putt, yeah, yeah. So they're all noticing this, and I'm thinking, well, they, you know, think they sea fishing, but every now and then one of these rods would yeah. crack round and the line would go, and I thought they're catching a few fish. I've got to go down and have a chat with them. So I popped down. I said, "All right, lads, you see, doing well." And he said, "Yeah, yeah, we're we're on the rig. Are you on the rig?" No, I'm not on the rig. <laughs> said, oh, yeah, what's up? <laughs> so what's the rig then? And he showed me this little hair rig with a peanut on it, small hook. I went, right, all right, okay. And i never forget going back to my swim that night. I had two big lumps of lunch in me on a size two hook or something, free lined. Going back to my swim, like, I've got to get out of the health food shop tomorrow and get some... Uh, went to the health food shop, got some peanuts, and then went to the tackle shop and bought some one pound line. There's some smaller hooks. Because you used to tie your hairs on separately that's right, yeah, as well. Yeah, so you tie yeah. them on. And peanuts that. were a nightmare because they used to spin when you reeled them yeah. in. So they'd always yeah. curl the hair Kink up. You had yeah. to pull it out, yeah. But, um, Dude, so um, did you know that there was a rig out there at that time? No, not a clue. Right. We was, in the, we was out in the, in the sticks, really. I only knew about three people who can't fish the lake. Mm. It was three old boys that used to can't fish the lake. And you didn't have the gear then either. You know, most of the gear was all you know, spinning rods really and and uh yeah, we went and got the peanuts and then it was a different ball game. We just caught everything in the lake. Yeah. We went from catching four fish a year to twenty five fish a year. Yeah. And there was no twenty pounders in there. The biggest one I caught was eighteen. Yeah, I mean, I mean, imagine what it would be like now if we just went back to side hooking now and just see what a difference, you know, presenting, uh, you know, the yeah, bait like that would. Yeah, twitches and all that, and yeah, I remember um, uh, using a boilie mix from Duncan Kay's baits, uh, bait seventy eight, and we rolled it into balls, and it had a must have, must have had a lot of gluten in it. It was really rubbery, and we used to put these uh, with bait needles through the bait like you did a potato. And thread it through and then tie it on. And uh, I had about six runs on it one day and didn't land one fish. Right. Because I was freelining them and you were just pulling the bait out of his mouths because it was embedded inside this big ball yeah. of rubber, basically. Yeah. And you just pull them out of your mouth. So it was. Uh, you, you noticed when you first started using hair rigs as well that you were getting quite a few bite offs. Did you notice that? No, not really. No. Lee Jackson, I don't know if you listen to his podcast. He it was funny how right um the hair rig was around in the earlier what was it like 81 something like that. Mm. But there were there were a lot of people I mean Lee was saying he was fishing Darren f- at the time as well and um that's where that you know that stuff was sort of going yeah. on wasn't it? Terry was fishing there, wasn't he? Yeah. Um and Lee sort of come up with the hair rig by um he was getting bite offs and he wanted it, so he actually ended up tying a hair all oh, right. To extend, yeah, yeah, to actually yeah. extend the length of the hook link. You used to get. I think also a lot of them days you used to use um, mono, yeah, hook links. Whereas now we're using coated braids and really stiff fluorocarbon. So even if they were taking it right back, you'd probably get a take before they it, bit you off. If you yeah. know what I mean. I think I yeah. don't know. You know, but you say about side hooking. With these bait screws and tying baits on, you're not far off side hooking now, are we? That's what I mean. It's, it's getting you know, closer it's, and closer yeah, to yeah. 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 You, you've seen the rig downstairs as you come into the corridor yeah. uh, reception. We've got Lenny Middleton's first hair rig, yeah. ever hair rig. Yeah, and that's like two inches long, isn't it? Yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That uh, Regan dragged out of <laughs> Wavedy D Lake. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, do you think going back to long hairs, really, really long hairs? Now, Who knows, you? mate? You're not going to know unless you try, do you? You know. Are you going to try? Uh, I, this year I did fish. Um, not this year. Last year I fished. We've went back to longer hairs and the liner liner. Um, uh, with big baits and uh, 
because the big baits when you cast a big bait out you've got a less, lot less tangles it's like a PV bag almost you can see it separating on the cast and I did got some good hook holes on the fish you know I was using about a two inch hair but when you start fishing further and further out you know you're like oh is that tangled and yeah uh, I ended up using the Ronnie rig like everybody else in the end and catching plenty. So it was, uh, but like I said, again, with that rig, I would quite happily use that rig on Welly, you know. Oh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, yeah, they're, I'd be they're, in they're there. Now yeah. they're looking for the bait. They're, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a separation thing with the hair. I think Aaron might have said on our, um, our rig podcast um, that he liked stiff hairs as well. Like Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. And that's like side looking, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, I saw that. That, that intrigued me, that did. I yeah. thought it was a bit different. Yeah, you've got to listen to what he says. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, as you said, yeah, I, I, I didn't know him until you, you mentioned about his uh, catching abilities. Mm. But yeah, he was using a pop-up as well, with a shot behind the pop-up on the That's hair. right, yeah. 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 But I mean, it's, 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 it's fishing differently as well, you know, fishing, um, fishing a, a, a soft braided hook link like that now. You, you're not you're not seeing people doing this so often nowadays, are you? And uh, No, you know. People are scared of so there's a lot. Of I mean, tangles. one of Pete's um, favourite rigs used to be about five strands of three pound maxima. And that's like a, you know, we used to use a Christ and stuff. So it's like a, a multi-strand. A multi-strand like yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we were all using, I mean, it was a nightmare for tangling in those days before we used to clip on a PV bag and things like that. But we used to all use inline leads with those. Remember those zip leads with the big thick tubing and that. Yeah, we used to use them. Like, were they called tadpole or something? Weren't they? Or? No, that tadpole was a helicopter one, wasn't it? Right. That had a, yeah. had a funny uh, shank to it. But yeah, the zip line were inline leads. They looked like yeah. you cast yeah, a big waggler floats. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah. Big thick tubing, <laughs> but um, that was the stop because because in them days it was that silkworm and on all the other um, braids. You you had it in your head. I think because we used to use a lot of mono for hook links you had it in your head that the softer the better we used to dental floss to start mm. with as well mm. and um and of course the tangles were a fucking nightmare yeah <laughs> especially the tension coming and stuff like that i can remember people reading in that multi-strand and, and the hook being embedded in the in the hook link and stuff like that so uh yeah we've sort of gone the full circle now haven't we we're going stiffer and stiffer now and uh i know we're creating a new trend loads of now, swivels and bits and pieces all over i it. know i know it's a uh, it's but a, it works, you know. Uh, you know. Yeah. No, I. I mean, like, I, I've I've used a spinner rig and stuff like that as well. And uh, Crocky, this is turning into a rig podcast. Yeah. yeah. Not really talking <laughs> to the right person. I, yeah. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, you, you know, it's fishing, don't you? Those spinner rigs, and uh, it's it's. Uh, you're not worrying it, about tangles either, are you? No. The, you know, no, no, when or, you're banging out baits a long way, and that you need that confidence that it's. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's fishing. So how does it feel to be the British record holder? No, it's still right. Five years later, I'm surprised. Are you surprised I'm you've held on to it for, for five I years? I am. I'm very surprised. Yeah. I, I didn't think, um, I couldn't see any fish from anywhere else really beating it until these Grenfell fish started popping up. And I was like, oh, they're big. And then I think COVID saved me this year. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Maybe. But what's the biggest one out of um, Grenfell now? It's mid-60s? About mid-60, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so and this... they're growing all the time, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. But it's one of them. I, I think the parrot would probably be... I think it'd be the the last proper record, not proper, but they're fed in Grenville, aren't they? He feeds them loads of pellets as well as they fish for. Don't get me wrong, I ain't got anything against anyone who fishes those types of waters, but and we could say that most lakes they're fed from the anglers and all the rest of it. But um, I don't know that fish is just a freak of nature, and I can't see. Yeah, you know, there are. We spoke earlier. You know, there's a few sixty pounders knocking about. That's the beauty of carp fishing. You never know something could just. I mean, that fish just. When I joined it, it was about fifty five pounds, I think, tops. And within three years, it was sixty eight. It oh. just, you know, that fish was just a law unto itself. It just kept growing and growing and growing. It used to feed all through the winter. You know, a lot of fish get caught. Um, start of December they're their top weight and then they lose a bit through the winter and then get bigger and bigger in the spring that used to get bigger all the way through until it, until it spawned yeah yeah and it was a male so it never used to lose a lot it was a male mm. was it as mm. well blimey yeah yeah you, did you say when you when you started fishing there because obviously you weren't fishing for um, a fish of that size then how, how big was it when you put your name down on the waiting list it was 37 pound wow because my friend Babel who's uh, Neil Brooks he's a He's a port in market. He showed me a photograph of it. It's the first fish he caught out of the lake when he went there. And he said, uh, 
Have you heard about this lake in Newby? Not far from you. He said it's a beautiful place, mate. It's an absolutely stunning place. And and uh, and I must admit, one of the things that did attract me to it, he said, you can, you drive around the lake and park in your swim. But at the time, I was fishing Dinton, and it's a long old walk around Dinton with your barrow. And and uh, I thought, <laughs> and I said to my mate Roy, who was on Dinton with me at the time, I said to him about it. He said, well, we'll put, I'll put your names down. So he phoned her up, put our names down, and Terry Earn was. Uh, Fishing Dinton with us at the same time, so is Bernie Lofters, and uh, just through conversation, like you do when you sat next door to someone, we told them about it, and, all, and they put their names down. About a few months later than us, and Bernie got in, I think the year after I got in, and Terry didn't get in until two years after I got in. So it shows you that it was quite. A, and it took us seven years to get in. So what? So was the attraction with that lake that fish, or was it? I mean, it's a. But it's a beautiful place as well, It was just it? another lake to go, have somewhere else in the back burner, you know, while you're fishing Denton. And it wasn't, you know, I didn't even, I never even walked around it. The first time I walked around it was when we got a ticket. Right. And then, you know, we were pleasantly surprised. And the, <laughs> other, the other massive surprise was there were so many fish in there. You know, I, I thought a fish of that size, when it got up to 50s and that, you're thinking, you know, I don't know, it's about 20 acres. I'm thinking, what, it's got 50 fish in it, 20, 30 fish? I don't know. Mm. But it was, you know... I think it was getting on for 200 fish in there. So it was it was just convenient for you at the time, living in the area, to put yeah. your name down, which just happened to produce the Everything worked, when, you know, I met the girl, uh, my wife now who lives in Newbury, and uh, and the ticket turned up for, for the lake in Newbury. So. so how big was the parrot when you started fishing for it? I think it was about 52, 54, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and did you notice anything sort of particular <laughs> about that fish you know ca- catcher wise was it was there a pattern to how it got caught or? no it got caught all around the lake it wasn't like any favored areas um the thing i did know notice about it was how small its mouth was a tiny yeah. little mouth a really tiny you could just about push an 18 mil boil in its mouth a fish of that size yeah I mean, it's 42 inches long you only noticed that when roy caught it yeah yeah roy caught it on an 18 mil wafter and he said look at its mouth and we could only put the wafter in its mouth do you think our fish was getting away with it a lot then? It had a funny mouth. It, was, it wasn't um, through damage or anything. It was just one of these birth defects because I've seen pictures of it when it was about 12 pounds and its mouth was like it then when it got stopped from... It got taken from one of the other lakes down the road and put in there. And, um, yeah, it's um, it's just... But that's a weird thing. You'd think of a fish with a tiny little mouth like that would struggle to get big. <laughs> can't, can't eat much. You can't make it up, can you, you know? Yeah, mm. it's weird. It's how greedy that fish must have been. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. um, but yeah, but but I guess at the time, so you weren't, so you weren't, you know, setting rigs or anything to, you know, to fall. No, that, I just stopped using the twenty-four millers. And did you say you thought you thought you hooked it and lost it before? I lost a good fish that was so heavy, um, and it and it was in a deep margin, and it just plodded up and down. Didn't do anything spectacular, but it was very very heavy, and it, you know, and I was looking at the rod, thinking, Jesus, I've got. A, a weed bed with this or what and the, and the hook broke which is the only time that hook let me down so uh, you think it could have been that one could have been but it might not have been you never know i mean the amount of times on there that i thought i'd hooked it and i landed it and it wasn't it so yeah you know. so what were you like to live with i mean with vanessa then was it your complete obsession for, the, for yeah, those five I years yeah i try to keep things separate you know right because i've got i've always kept things separate you know but it's not just been fishing my whole life, you know. So I had a judo went up to my twenties, and I did motorbike racing for a couple of years, uh, motocross. Um, I didn't. St- I've always fished through the judo and doing the motorbike, right? All of it, you know. But Would motorbike you say that racing a- didn't last very long. Someone said to me, uh, "You've got the speed, but you haven't got the skill." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a crash a lot, so I knocked that on the head before I properly hurt myself. <laughs> well, I mean, you were used to like knocks and bumps from judo, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, so, on a right. motorbike, it's a bit different ball game. Yeah, yeah know, it's a bit more hitting the trees and things like. It's not very good. There's only one winner where you hit a tree. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, was was the parrot the first lake you fished where the the goal was just you, you really had to catch that fish before? Not you really. Uh, Denton Pass, so I really had to catch Bruno before yeah. I left there. Um, Welly, I really wanted to catch the, the turtle before I left there. Hmm. Um, it's tricky because I try not to pick a on the other lakes a fish because you're only doing one night a week. You, you know, you're always paying second fiddle to like, like and Terry turned up and weighs him. You know, I just thought he's going to catch it before me. He's doing four nights a week. I up and catch it and piss off and let me back at it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, I get on with Terry. I've known Terry since he was small. But uh, 
He used to turn up in his flash little uh, Ford Fiesta when he was working for the post office, all all the fat wheels and all that reason on it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, so Terry, I always lose <coughs> track of like the time period between you catching it and Terry Terry catching. Terry it. caught it a year later than me. The uh, yeah. Was Terry the last one to catch it? He caught it in February. It was at the same time of year as you. I as think well. he probably yeah. It was. It was in yeah. It was. It was either February or January. I was pipe fishing that day. I remember him catching it on the. But, but I mean, what a great water to fish as well. To, to to think that you're fishing for potentially like a British record cup, and and it feeds in the winter as well. And you yeah. you're, you're going to every time I went, get... I know I was in with a shout. Yeah. And the beauty of with it, when I did catch it, there's about an, another five or six forty pounders in there. I'd caught them all more than once. I'd, it was the last fish in the lake that I needed to catch, and then it's completely done. I I, I I didn't fish it the day I caught it I never went back what I did go there actually was took Pete as a guest that's nice isn't yeah, it yeah did you feel the intensity building a little bit once you caught all those other I fish? was worried about it dying if I'm perfectly honest how old is it I don't know I don't, know. I don't think it was that old no it was just it just with these freaks in nature where they grow so fast so quickly you think you ain't gonna live forever you automatically you know? think that. I was fishing the lake next door when they found it dead to start of the season it was the first day of the season it it popped up, mm. and all these cars were going. <laughs> and Dave Flame was travelling up from Cambridge or wherever he lives now, and he's he was just about to start his. And I phoned. He had it. didn't he, he didn't start fishing there. No, God, no. I bet he was. Uh... And, he, and of course, there you have to join another lake before you can get on Cranwells. And he joined another lake for about three or four years. He just got his whilst ticket. he was on the waiting list. Just got his ticket. Oh my God! Yeah. And then you find out he's dead. I've done. I've done it on other lakes. I've yeah. joined lakes. Turned up there. And they said the big one's found dead. You know? <laughs> in fact, one late I've joined it twice and never fished it. Yeah. Once the big one had died when I joined it, it's uh, Pete Phillipson's place in uh, Fatcham called uh, Lodge Lakes. And the second time after I caught the parrot, uh, my mate Roy was on there and he said, uh, try and get an ear. And I got it. Pete let me in. And then I got there and he said, you don't, no dogs are allowed on here. And my dog fishes everywhere with me. You got a stuffy. I got a little stuffy, Sam best dog in the world and um he said we don't let dogs on it wasn't his fault it was the people he's running off wouldn't let dogs on there and uh so i <laughs> never got a fish out either so. <laughs> that that parrot do you think it swam between oxley's lake and cromwell's lake? not very often but i know it definitely did once are you uh, surprised it never got caught out of oxley's lake that that, that would have that would have one really of my friends a of pigeons, one of my friends it? got up a tree in oxley's lake and said he was watching the fish and suddenly the parrot swam past <laughs> And he went, aye, aye. He, uh, he said, I got down from the tree and started fishing Oxleys. And all his friends are saying, why are you fishing Oxleys? And he said, well, I just fancy a change. <laughs> yeah. Just saying different. He said, and the next thing you know, he got caught out in the next lake. Same thing happened to me. So Oxley, sorry, Oxleys Lake, is that's, that's a separate... I mean, you're on the same ticket, but you can... You can fish Crown Rounds and Oxleys. Right. Oxley, and the weird thing is, there's a little causeway between them, but there's a ditch each side... And quite often the river floods into Crown Wells at the top and then it goes in the ditch. But they don't need much excuse, those fish, to... There's one fish called the pretty fish that goes in and out quite often. And also the big common in Oxleys goes into... Because I went on the lake next door after I caught the parrot to catch the Oxleys common. And uh, and one of my mates caught it out of Crown Wells, £49. Jet black common, gorgeous. And I was like, gutted. I thought, I'm not going back to Cranwell's because I'd done three years and I'd had enough. I'm not going back on Cranwell's trying to catch a fish. It should be in the lake next door. I thought, well, there's plenty of other big ones in Oxley that I'll fish there. I'll just carry on fishing it. And I carried on fishing it and it had um, flooded quite badly that year and the water was coloured. So the fish had got a bit lighter in colour. And I caught this common in August and it was £48.12. Beautiful big common. I was like... But, and there's another big common in there. I scratch my mouth. I don't know what fish this is. <laughs> it's not the Oxley's common because that's next door. But no, he'd come back in and carried on feeding the lake. Got a bit lighter because of the coloured water. So and, I mean, essentially, I mean, is it is it almost like one lake? Because you can't really say what. I've always said to other. Mark, is it the best idea with these two would to dig them into one and have that as the causeway as an island. I said, what a lake that would be yeah. because they're like chalk and cheese. Cranwell's is shallow. Oxley's is up to thirty foot deep, and some of the sides are just sheer. Right, but um, they've kept it like that. Does it, does it need a lot of rain then for the fish to be able to to move between the two lakes? Not really. They they can you know. I think oh, I think blimey. I think in the spring they 
when they spawn earlier in crown wells and they can obviously smell it because it trickles in like a little stream on one side of Oxley's. Yeah. And, um, but they always seem to get back in there and some fish don't move at all. Do you think they actually know where they are supposed to live, where their homes I really so. are? Yeah, and or where they prefer to live. And, and, and that's kind of... Um, and, and, and that could be... Because every like, year they end up back there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean, if you would take that as a, as a lake, so one lake, you know, fish would potentially just behave the same way if they were just in one lake. Well, you know, well, it's just, like a lot of big fish, isn't it? If you do yeah. your research to catch a big fish from a certain lake, a lot of the times that certain fish gets caught from that end of the lake, that area. Hmm. And very rare. I've got on, on that tippings that I run, there's certain fish in my lake. It's only 13 acres, but they've been caught 10 times at that side, maybe once down there. So, you know, if you target that fish, hmm. you go from down there. Hmm. So, catching the, the record then, and uh, were you confident? Did you, did you see anything any different that session? Was it. <laughs> the best thing that session was Terry wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been, I dropped in there on the way home from work. Um, the day before and uh, and the, the what was different was I knew it was coming in cold and I don't know if you've ever noticed but when it comes in really cold the day before the lake usually fishes really well it definitely does for pike and it does for carp as well and it was going to be minus five that night and it'd been quite a quite a mild spell I've never been able to pick and choose my days off because of the weather it's just if it comes on a Wednesday night then even better which it which that week it had and I got there for fishing and Lee the bailiff was there and he said to me I saw the parrot yesterday boshed out on the shallows where next to where he was fishing and uh, I said you caught anything he said no not yet but it's looking good and while I was talking to him I saw two fish jump well Terry had gone days fishing that day and I'm pretty sure he'd have been on the ball and been where I'd fished if he'd uh, if he'd been there so that was a god thing because that was my bugbear every time I went on my Wednesday night Terry is where I would know I should be so you just you know suck it in and go second best whatever um and so he wasn't there and this um Lee Lee said he'd seen the fish in front of him so I, I didn't go next door to him because you know I wouldn't want that done to me so I went two swims up and a little gap in the reeds with a tree in it but I'd seen more fish round to the right so I fished two rods round to the right one to the left, and I knew there was a gully on the shallows. It, it was like two foot deep, or three foot deep, and then it just dropped down to four foot little gully. It was about a rod length wide. So I put a rod in there and fished two out long by the island where I'd seen these other fish jump. And I was set, I set the rods up. I got the rods out first. Always get the rods out first. I was setting the bivvy up, and Lee came up the bank and said to me, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. So I'd only been there a couple of hours. He said, you fancy a cup of tea? I said, yeah. And the bobby just dropped down a bit and then pulled up tight. He said, you're away, mate. <laughs> Went down there, bent into it. Reeled it straight in to start with, just coming straight towards me. And I said, it's a small one, mate. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, oh, I don't know. And then it felt really heavy. And I thought, Jesus. I thought, I don't think there's any weed out there, but it feels like it's picked up a bit of weed. And all the way around um, ways in his, uh, I don't know why they dug it like this, but there's a, a five foot gully all the way around the margins. So you've got like a five foot gully and then it comes back up to like two foot. For, and uh, I, I got it moving and, and then it tried to kite round to this uh, to the left of me and there's this dead tree in the water and wading right out and giving it side strength. I thought, God, I feel heavy now. And I suddenly moved it and I said, I feel heavy, Lee. I said, uh, I think it's got a load of weed around it. And then, and then it's um, on the shallow, it's tail came out of the water. Well, everyone says it's mm. so long, it's in three foot of water and it's tails out of the water. And it's nose is on the deck. So you're thinking, I think I know what fish that is. So the old bottle starts going <laughs> and your legs start shaking. And, uh, and then I pulled it into the, over the gully and it, and it dived straight down the gully into more weed and all these bubbles come fizzing up. Like, and you basically had to, and I'm pleading, please, you know, the hook stay at... I've got it moving and Lee's got the net underneath and it's gone in the net and I've seen the big linear scales in it and he did have a big ball of weed over its head and I said to Lee that's one of two fish that is <laughs> and I said that's either the floppy tail linear which I'd caught that winter anyway I said oh that's a parrot and uh, looked at his head and I'm fucking hell it's a parrot <laughs> it's like <laughs> massive relief you know because yeah. I had to be perfectly honest I'd had enough of the lake by then as lovely as it was 
three years fishing the same lake i normally like to move around different lakes and stuff and that and i you know i'm not one of these people to stay on although he's saying about welly going back three years but normally i fish a different lake every other year and uh so it's a, a massive relief i'm finally free to get off the lake and uh and and i've caught a fish is, and i knew it would be about 61 62 pound I'm never going to catch a fish this big. Brilliant. What was the it? highest weight previously to, to you catching it? 64, I think. Mm. But it had been a perfect storm for me because when I first joined, it got caught quite regularly. It got caught five or six times a year. But it went like eight months without getting caught the last year I was on there. And I'd have put my house on it being dead. I was sure it had been dead and been ottered and been pulled up the bank. Mm. It was before they had the otter fence around there. And um, it had just been feeding all that time, through the, all through the mild winter. Must have been. And getting bigger and bigger and bigger and then that cold night was coming in and he thought i'd have a munch before uh yep, it freezes just, up just in case yeah. just in case yeah. and my bait was there and wallop yeah wow you know but, no, uh, there's but, only two of us on the lake as well which is great because when, when we went to weigh it um i said to lee you tell me this you know what it weighs and that i don't, made a few phone calls roy and i've got a parrot and pete pete was a pete was pipe fishing at norfolk that day and he'd uh he was just tying his boat up. He said, and I'll find him out. And he said, he's doing a little dance. And I'm like, hey, because, you know, it's like you tell your mates every time you go, is it going to be this week? And, you know, and all the rest of it. And uh, I said to Lee, you read it off and tell me what it weighs. And we put the things up like that through a bar and we lifted the scales up. And he's looking at it and he's going, uh, 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 I can't really. I said, what are you? fanning about that mate I said what's it weigh he said you better look at this you better look I don't know if it's right so we did it span it around and I've gone like that and the scales has gone up I hovered over 70 pounds and then gone like that and gone fucking hell that's nearly 70 pounds <laughs> he's gone I know that's what I'm reading he said that's what I can see Jeez. so we let it and I said that's over 68 pound just call it 68 he said get on to get on to Mark at the you know on the estate he said uh, he's got some digital scales that they use for for this very purpose and uh, so I phoned Mark up and he come flying around with his uh, in his little truck thing and uh, with a couple of the other bailiffs and that and of course then it sinks into your head that's a that's a British record mm. you know I didn't have that that wasn't even I didn't never have thought in a million years that that fish would be a British record of course you never think you're going to be the one that's going to catch the British record and uh, yeah they come around and weighed it with these digital Rubens which when they got tested, were spot on, and it was sixty-eight one, and I was just and yeah, cloud yeah. nine, and I was just like, Phew. well, your your name then is like because you, you've, if you don't like one previous podcast to this, you haven't you haven't done an awful lot of publicity stuff. I know I never did a bit. I used to put the odd fish in the paper years ago when I first started using Pete's bait just to give them a bit of publicity, but they never used to publicise the bait. They just say caught in a body, so I never bothered again. And uh, I know uh, I know a lot of people in the angling trade and through fishing lakes that they're on and all that but I've never been sponsored or anything like that and, yeah you know, so Dean Fletcher British record holder, all of a sudden that's, that's yeah the, everyone knows my name yeah which, which <laughs> is yeah well I mean which is nice isn't it do you see um so yeah like you say you've got the you've got those that they've got those other fish coming through at the moment but five, five years is still a long time to, to hold yeah well to Oz caught the record before didn't he the, the yeah. uh, two tone and he he, he phoned me up or sent me a text I can't remember now and said to me you, oh, I think he phoned me up I said you bastard you beat me a record and all that and uh, you know it's like it, that was nice and my phone just went in a meltdown it just I had 200 and something odd texts I know I know. I mean do you feel that your profile has changed in the sport as a, as a consequence of that not really no no one I'm still a green grocer that does one night a week yeah yeah don't get me wrong I ain't the best angler in the world I'm persistent and I and I catch my fair share but I wouldn't say I'm like one of, like I'm not Daryl Peck you know I just do what I do every week and enjoy it and if somebody else had been in my shoes after that fish they could have caught it it was just luck it was that big I did everything lined together you mm. know my my two mates caught the parrot before I did mm. both I think they both weighed 62 at the time uh, Adam and Roy and uh, you know they could say that they're better anglers than me because they caught it before I did it took me three years to catch it mm. But when I did catch it, it was the biggest it's ever been. It's a funny old scene, though, isn't it, with the record carp and stuff nowadays as well? Yeah, I it? try not to get involved because it, yeah. it comes across from me. I, it'd sound great, wouldn't it, if I started slagging them off and joined in the arguments. I'd just keep quiet. Yeah. 
all these home fens and what is it, big rig and all that. It's not my cup of tea, you know. But um, everyone's their own. Yeah, and what's know? the lake in Kent that done that? That that, that spawned up that there, would have been fair game. Wait, that what, fish. Yeah, what was the name of that? that uh, what, the Wingham's. Wing, wasn't it? Wingham's. Yeah, yeah, that fully yeah. scaled because a lot of fish that have. Uh, what was that? An eighty pounder, wasn't it? Yeah, a lot of fish that have held the record have been spawn bound, haven't they? The Bishop from Redmere. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, the nice thing with the parrot, I don't think the record's ever been caught in the winter. Right. And it was a male fish, so that didn't have any mm. nothing to do with spawning with that fish. It's just a monster. I remember asking Lee about two tone whether it was a male or not. They, I don't think they were. They sure. don't think they knew, did they? No, no. But it's, it's funny. You always associate the females as being the. Uh, you know the the bigger ones. Yeah, you you you, you s- just tell when they drop a lot of weight, don't you? Come the following spring when they get caught after mm. spawning, and the males don't. But the, the the males have got more time just to keep. Yeah. Just keep building. Keep up building and on. Yeah. Yeah. The the turtles are the same at, at Welly. That was a male. Yeah, that was a male. Was yeah, yeah. Yeah. They normally. Not always, but they're normally bellies are straight as a board and you. I mean, running your you 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 run a syndicate like t- Tippins Lane. Mm. Um. If you're buying carp, do you, do you ever buy carp to put in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do, do you, are you selected between male fish and female fish? No, no. Do you like a nice balance? Or? You need a balance. Yeah. I mean, I know people have stocked too many big females and then there's not enough fish to spawn them on and they die spawn bound. Mm. You need the males. A lot of people moan about, oh, you should take the small commons out, you know, the ones that aren't doing anything and stuff like that. But they're the males that are helping the females spawn. Mm. You need those fish in your lake. Mm. It's all uh, all about a balance. Yeah, I mean, you can get greedy and think, well, we want the biggest ones. Oh, we'll yeah, the you females, can pick all the big you... ones from the stock. Yeah, and you've got all females, and then nothing to spawn them. Yeah, yeah, you like you say, you do. You, you need a nice balance. It is you? difficult when you picking fish. I mean, was it last winter? Uh, he said to me, "I've got." Uh, I, I now I just buy two or three fish a winter. Now I just top it up every year. What size? Um, or what year? doubles usually. Yeah, yeah, like C4s. Yeah. C4s, you're yeah. usually C3s, C4s. Um, and uh, I got there and he had five there and they were 20 pounders. <laughs> and it was like, fuck, it's a bit strong, you know, money for me. <laughs> I came away with all five fish and <laughs> I couldn't pick a monster. How much like, is a 20 pounder nowadays? Uh, about 500 quid, aren't they? Not cheap, No, they? not cheap. And you, but you're like a kid in sweet shop, you know. I said to him, don't show me any more. Don't send me any more pictures. You know, I don't need it. But they've they've all been caught. Um, they're all up in weight, and you know, I don't normally buy twenty pounders. It's mm. not not what I do. I know I buy them smaller and grow them on. Do, do, do you find as well, you know, with the with the bigger fish because they've been kept in a, a sort of a more artificial environment for longer that they can find it harder to adjust to, you know, like, you know, the wild a wild fishery. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. To, you know, we I spoke about with Tom. He said to me. Uh, you try and uproot a fully grown oak tree and replant it, you're going to be very lucky if that tree grows. You plant an acorn, it grow and live there for 100 years. That's a nice analogy. And that's the same with carp. Yeah. You put a small carp in a lake, it grows to the environment and all the rest of it and grows to the lake. Whereas you put a 30 pounder, it's happened, you know? Yeah. You put a 30 pounder in, they laugh a year and then die. They just... It's a new environment for them, and they're not happy there. So, like, they don't know how to feed it because they, they, they've been living off, mm. you know, they've been living off pellets for. I mean, if, if they're, That's they're why twenty pounds, fish are so hard to catch. A Dinton fish because most of those fish are just left to their own devices. S- Simon's fish are hard to catch. What yeah. you put them in the lake, and um, he doesn't feed them masses of pellet like a lot of other f- people do. Right, but they live forever. Yeah, you know. Yeah. No one fished the leanies, feed, fed the leanies pellets and stuff, did they? Mm. When they stopped them years ago, and that, and you know. They lived to seventy plus years. Yeah, it's it's, it's probably a, a, a better idea to 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 get them into a, a wild environment as, as quickly as possible. Mm. And uh, but it know. makes them bastards to catch on the word go. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how certain fish just grow bigger as well, isn't it, than others? You know, um, you, you you know we've experienced like people tethered up fish and stuff like that. You know, like the scar and you know mm. those fish that. Yeah, there, there is like a psychological reason crazy, why, they, fish, why, why those fish. Yeah. I, I know a fish in this country that have done the same thing. Yeah. Some really big fish that have had rigs in their mouths and uh, and they've grown really, wow. really big. You know, is it? You have experienced that then? No, no. Yeah. No, I don't want any tethered fish on my face. No, no. <laughs> Whoever, d- yeah. 
Yeah, whoever's rigged that was, if it would be kicked <laughs> off, but it, it might you just... You don't hear of it so much these days, do you? I don't know if it's because rigs and the components have got better through losing the leads and stuff like that. But you used to hear about it quite a bit, didn't you? Dead fish found in snags and... Uh, yeah. And I remember when they lost a big one at um, Orchid Lake, the big common there, they found it in the reed beds all wrapped up in line and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a that was a that was a nice fish. Yeah, yeah. Is it it's Diane? A, Is it called Arnie. Diane? Arnie. Arnie, that's right. Yeah, there was another one called Diane. Yeah, Arnie. There was Diane. another one in there called Diane. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a big common, and, uh, and and that's a lesson learned, isn't it, on a fishery like that? You know, mm. it's like you know, um, people have got to be. We, there's no excuse nowadays for that. No, no. But it, it's it's funny with um, you know certain fish, you know that they do, they do tend to get caught, and then so certain fish get caught, and then they get caught again pretty quickly straight afterwards and yeah uh, yeah it's like a stress response to getting caught yeah yeah and usually ones that are on their way out get caught a few times don't they yeah you normally get caught a few times and then next thing you know it's dead yeah i remember simon talking uh, on a podcast about that it, their their primal instinct when they know that they're not right is to try and feed isn't it yeah yeah you yeah know. And he's a man who knows about fish isn't he <laughs> yeah we had we were talking about his i mean his podcast was so popular yeah, and, uh, he's a lovely bloke. I've only yeah. met him once. Actually, we had a lock-in in a pub after one of, one of his Madden Penning's carp talks. And uh, we had a lock-in. It was just five of us. And we talk, got pissed and talked all night. <laughs> right, he's a lovely bloke. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, you mentioned as well, you, you, you like a heckle, don't you, when you get a little bit pissed? <laughs> that was a long time ago. You can be a bit of a rascal at times, Steve. <laughs> I'm a nightmare when I'm drunk. I am a nightmare when I'm drunk. I used to feel, But I haven't been drunk for a long time now. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been drunk for a long time, but yeah. yeah. So, so fi- uh, drinking and fishing, well, you haven't got time, I suppose, have you? There's no I've, never, I've never really got into that culture. I, 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 you know, I, I'm not saying I'm an angel. I've been pissed a few times in the bank in, my young, in the 80s and 90s and stuff when I was younger. But um, no, nah, no, nah, not anymore. Not I got drunk time. once on the bank. And uh, and at the time, you didn't really think anything. Of, I mean, I've only been drunk on the bank once, but it's it's not it's not the thing to be doing, is it? Really? No, and no. you know, as much as we enjoyed like mailing stuff, you know, well, that was the books. thing. Well, I was brought up on that. Yeah, you know, they're all all the stories of going down to the Indian and getting pissed and coming back and. Roger Smith's teeth falling out when he pukes and picks his teeth back out. And, it's, and we, we, we all used to just think that. And I think that was the way that everyone did it. And uh, I yeah. know it's wrong and all the rest of it. But I mean, it made a great story, didn't it? It was a brilliant story. And I love them books and, and, uh, and all the rest of it. But the truth of the matter is, when you're going to work the next night, driving to London and buying a fruit and veg, you're, you can't do it. No. You know? and, and as I say, I did it a couple of times when I was uh, younger, but. Do you think that's to your advantage as well with your fishing as well, that you, when you are fishing, you are just more focused than the, the, your average carp angler? Um, not really. I think, you know, I, I've still got, I get phoned up about work while I'm down, you know, I'm just, just fishing, mate. I'm not really well, you said you, super focused. Yeah. I don't think I'm, you know, any more focused than the next person. I mean, I know some people that are 100%, well, they're there, that's, you know. You know, I try and take it all in. I love being outside in the countryside in yeah. the fresh air. I couldn't work indoors. But you can apply just common sense to your carp fishing, really, and not, not yeah, necessarily I don't, have to I be Yeah, I don't too... worry about things. Yeah. I've met some anglers the last few years, good anglers. They've just got no confidence. They've got no confidence in their bait, no confidence in their rigs, and they're worrying about this and worrying about that, and you're like, you know. Yeah. You're pretty hard pushing not to use a decent rig these days or, a, you know, a, a fairly decent boilie or whatever, you know. Mm. It's, it's the last thing you should be worrying about, really. Get on the fish and then <laughs> the rest should do its, do its work. Yeah, yeah. You know? But not everybody can do that, can they? You know, it's... Uh... it's, it's, it's I think common sense comes into it a lot with fishing, mm. you know. And the other thing is, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm no superstar fisherman or all the rest of it, but I've got 40 years of experience of carp fishing. <clears throat> and I think you do things without thinking you do. through your experience. And people say, oh, why are you doing that? And you think, oh, yeah, why did I do that? Yeah, because yeah. experience has taught me to do that. So yeah. that comes into it as well. Mm. And I've definitely got a better carp fishing as I've got older. So Your early carp fishing experiences? I saw the old, uh, mus- you, you were talking about the old uh, mushroom bivy, wasn't it? You were yeah, the, yeah the old Send Market, was it called? Send Market bivy, the old up, straight up canvas yeah. bivy that used to yeah, have collapse the, my <coughs> brolly around and yeah yeah you had one of those I had one of those and do, do you know well, you've you done something different to me though actually because you took the centre pole out of the um, yeah we used to take the centre pole out and put canes in so you didn't have that pole 
See, I'm not that yeah. smart, really. Am. Well, I didn't think of that. It yeah. didn't last long. I used to usually bend and that anyway. Yeah. They were so when they got wet, those things, they weighed a ton. Mm. Used to have put them back in his bag that <laughs> hardly fitted in. But yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have it any way with my carp fish. In those days were, were great with the old glass rods and make your own gear and the Cardinal 55s and all that. And yeah, yeah. Make your own bait and. Yeah, no, yeah, like you say, there were there, there was there wasn't an awful lot of money that we could spend on carp fishing back then. No, and the gear wasn't there either. No. It was uh, only a few, you know, proper carp rods out there in them days. Yeah. It? I remember buying the Kevin Maddox carp rods, the KMF ones, and I I brought a pair of them and one fifty five, a girlfriend brought me a Cardinal fifty five. And then I uh, had to save up for the other reel and that. But because I've always worked flat out, I know don't get me wrong, I wasn't well paid by my dad. I've always had the money to buy nice tackle and have the best stuff I can, I can use, and that, you know, and that's why those guys from uh, all those years ago from um, from Darren Terry's friends and that spoke to me and that because I had two carbon rods and cardinal fifty fives. Because in my day, if you had decent gear, you knew what you were doing. Well, that's gone out the window now, isn't it? You're better off talking to someone whose gear looks like it's <laughs> used a bit. Really crap gear, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you know they've probably used it, and you know you can go and talk to the bloke who's got the latest of everything, and he ain't got a clue. <laughs> it's funny you can tell though. I um, um, Jamie Klossick. I bumped into Jamie Klossick on a lake a few years ago, and um, he was fishing with his friend. Um, was it Richard Bacon? Is is is, is it? Yeah, yeah. Roger Bacon. Roger, Roger Bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. But it was funny. I, I looked at. I was I, I was on a shallow on a lake. I was uh, I was doing a visit and uh, and I saw a set of carp rods on the lake that was behind this chalet. And it, I looked at, I looked at the rods straight away. And I thought, yeah, that's a that's a serious carp angler fishing mm, there. And it mm. was um, it was Roger Bacon. And uh, um, you could just you could just tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and it wasn't the shiniest. You know, it wasn't the I shiniest mean, best gear. You know, Roy tells me, you know, uh, angling direct where people go in there and buy the complete kit. And spend a fortune. What's the best reel? These are. I have three of them. Best rods, them. All of it, you know? Yeah. And then ask them how you tie a rig. Yeah. 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 There's so many people go carp fishing now. When I to say, when I went in the early days, I can count on one hand how many people I knew carp fishing. And, uh, Actually, Jerry said to me, I'm going to have to nick his quote. I think it was, no, it was it was Bev that said, um, um, that Simon Simon Crow, I think it was, said you can um, you can give a boxer the heavyweight champion's boxing gloves, but it doesn't make him a the, the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Y- you know, you, you, oh, yeah, you, need, you need to be able to yeah, use them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But it's um, all the gear, no idea. <laughs> but that's the fun of it nowadays for some people. People do like having kit, don't they? And that, that's part of the allure. Of some people, like, we used to I remember we used to fish a club late, and we used to have a bloke. I can't remember. We called him now, Mister Something or other, and he used to have new gear every time we came. Brand new stuff, all new. He never used to catch a lot, but he loved his gear, you know. And he'd have the latest. Well, everyone to their own, isn't it? You know. I know that's someone like that too. Who's that? Oh, the old man's like that, isn't he? <laughs> he yeah. has got a good selection. Flipping out, yeah. it looks like a showroom. Every well, you time show you me do. around the thing. You got half the stories. You should Damien's see, gear. You should see his garage, mate. It's a different. It looks like his own. I thought all shot. his gear oh, was here. Yeah. Let alone his garage. Oh, he's got, no, he's got a lovely array. He's got of racks and gear. racks up into the oh, sky yeah. bill <laughs> on pallets. Actually, I saw. I saw. I saw <laughs> he'll have his own warehouse if he had his own. Did you see? Duffy put a thing out on Instagram. Actually, it was like donate your fishing gear. Um, to a, I don't know it was a charity thing and he's donated your dad actually next to do, donate any fishing gear oh, spare I think fishing that, gear I he's think got. that come from Elliot actually I think that was Elliot's initiative Elliot Elliot Gray Elliot Gray right yeah, yeah. well you're, it's on your dad now there's a, there's a lot of gear there to donate oh too right <laughs> God, that makes someone happy <laughs> yeah someone's going to be very happy because cool, yeah. he does look after his stuff as he, well doesn't oh, he oh he does I took um, I went match fishing with Matt Godfrey the other week and uh, he lent me a seat box and uh, when I got it out the back of the van, Matt came over and he's like, it's your dad's, isn't it? <laughs> Don't get it dirty. Like, I was like, how do you know? He said, because I've never seen a seat box that clean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't get it dirty. We were gonna do all it. the floats are in perfect that's line. exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I sent it back, definitely nowhere near as clean as it was. No, no, you're not going to be disappointed if you had. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> he can put it all back. <laughs> he's, the worst person to, he's the worst person to go fishing with. I've never fished with Damon. I've, I've been down the lake. Well, you'd end up buying new fishing gear if you go fishing with him. Yeah. Well, he'd yeah. say, why are you using that? Yeah. And he'd go, oh, right, okay. Um, those rods aren't straight. It's like <laughs> everything. <laughs> well, you spend a lot of time with me like that because my gear's not straight ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, he's. Um, I've only seen him once, and that was when he was fishing with Pete once, and uh, all his gear was, as you say, 
immaculate all level and yeah he knows clean. how to use it yeah yeah he knows how to use it though yeah. although, what about, what about although Pete? I, I did tell you that story when he had that take and uh, oh yeah, yeah 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 he had a take this is a good one too go on then well yeah. you know everything's perfect with damon yeah yeah well he you'd bought those captor hooks out right with the little green little caps caps on, on the yeah, end yeah, yeah. and uh damon's fishing this margin over maggots i think he was and uh suddenly he's bobbing bleak <laughs> like that and a big bow away came like whew, off and Pete said, so I spooked off your spot then. <laughs> and then Pete said, you did take that green cap off, didn't you? And of course, Damien being Damien, left it on to the last minute because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because he wanted to keep the hook sharp and all that. And he'd left it on. And I think that was his only take that week as well. And he balls it up. He's the most anal, meticulous yeah. angler you're ever going to fit. Yeah, I don't he know how you keep a rubber ball on the end oh, of your hook. He wouldn't have liked that. <laughs> no. Especially not Pete pointing it out. He would no. forget it. He'd probably scrub this bit off, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this bit's definitely staying on. He's like, have that removed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's good, that. I bet a few people have done that, though. Oh, without a doubt. I yeah. know I probably would have done. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, but what you can say about Damien, he does catch them, doesn't he? He yeah. had a blinding year last year, didn't he? He did. He yeah. did. But no, no. Like you say, no. You, you can. You, you were talking about Dinton as well. And um, w when did you start fishing? When did you start? Well, fishing I, on Dinton that? Is, is ten minutes from where I work, where my dad's farm is, and uh, I fished it in the early years um, when they put the carp in there. It used to be day ticket. I get confused between the two lakes, Black Swan and White, White Swan. Swan. Well, well, Black Swan, I say, is quite a recent, recently being open. It's probably Black Swan's the bigger one, isn't it? Yeah, White Swan's the small. One. White Swan's fishing. the old one that's always been there. That's when we fished it. Uh, Black Swan wasn't open. That was just a boating lake. And uh, Simon used to throw a few fish in there, grow them on, and then go around and catch them on rod and line. And if you lost a forty pounder in the White Swan, he'd go and catch one from there and bring it over and put it. Oh swap right. It over. Because I remember. Um, wasn't like someone like Paul Forward and Dave Lane fishing on the the the, the bigger one, yeah, the, Black the, the Black Swan. Swan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but but then it was a little bit sort of unknown, wasn't it? It was always the, yeah. It was well, always Simon the other put leg. some fish in there, stopped them all that. But we'd, there'd been some monsters seen in there, and they never got caught. You know, I mean, it's doing really well now, and they're some of the best looking fish. So those in those the monster fish never did get caught. No, or? and I know people who were feeding them broken boilies, and they're taking them on the drop, and they never got caught. So they were originally put into that yeah, mix. Yeah, Simon had obviously put them in there years ago yeah, and they'd yeah. grown on, but they never got caught. Right. You right. know, I know good anglers that saw those fish, mm. but they don't get caught. They don't all get caught. Mm. I've had them in my lake pop up dead. I had a, like an upper 20 fully scaled mirror. Never seen it in my life. Never been caught. I'd had the lake 12 years. Never been caught. Mm. So they don't, you know, they don't all get caught, do they? They, 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 they can't do. <clears throat> no, especially in Dinton. <laughs> no. But the but White Swan's a, 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 a smaller, more secluded, intimate lake, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite a narrow, like yeah. a, like an L shape, like a strip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you start fishing on there? Uh, late eighties, right? Yeah, was it late eighties? Yeah, no, no, mid eighties because I think the syndicate was about eighty six or something like that when they syndicated it, and uh, and it, but it's always been tricky. Even when the fish were smaller, it's been really tricky. The only year it got a bit easier was when the bloke who run it decided to treat the weed and put so much in he even killed all the leaves hanging off the trees that were touching <laughs> the edge of the lake. Yeah, Bloody proper hell. savage. And all the weed died in the lake and it was just a bit growing in the margins. So the fish just hugged the margins and we all fished the margins and caught them like that. But they weren't monsters then. They were lucky didn't kill the carp then, right? Yeah, they? very lucky. They're very God. clean looking. <laughs> were they? <laughs> yeah, I bet they Bleached were. Them. <laughs> Bleached, yeah, yeah. Turned them all into ghost carp. <laughs> what sort of water was it in the, um, you know, in the in the eighties when you? I I remember really it's like the later nineties when it really started to. Yeah, I, I well, used to really hear about it. Um, they just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Those fish. It's just it's just the same as Welly. It's a lake they're in. You know, it's a, it's a really rich pit, and um, but it's never been easy. You know, I remember Laney and coming on there and going, scratching his head, going, I've had so many fish jumping over me, Dean, I can't buy a bite. I've tried everything, you know. Feeding on that Being source. a good angler, he eventually sussed it out, but you do, it takes a lot of, lot of catching those fish. And what? I think it's still the same now, although they have got the the luxury now of fishing it in the close season, which we didn't have then. Right. You know, they'd all spawned, and that by the time we were allowed to fish them again. So so why were they, why were they, why were they so twitchy to sort of try and catch? Not a clue, mate. 
the um, there's certain baits you couldn't catch bites on uh, fish on. Um, certain certain companies' baits you couldn't get a bite on. It's really weird, really weird. And uh, homemade baits did really well there. Yeah, People, right. uh, Gary Verity and his friends, Gary yeah. Bolton yeah. and all them lot, they mm. they did well. Gary didn't fish it, but um, Gary Verity did, and uh, there's a few others. All lovely lads, all very successful, but all good anglers as well. Um, they kept the bait going in and uh, and did really well uh, on their own bait. And then uh, I say, then I bumped into Pete and started using his bait, and uh, that was a, that, so that, that was the key for me. Good timing. Mm. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So I mean, the, these guys as well. Then so it, it was. It was a group of guys do, just just putting a lot of bait into the lake. That yeah. That good bait. It always yeah. Time and time again. Yeah, isn't without, it? they did the same on Harrow, didn't they? With the yeah. club mix. The club mix. Yeah. You know, group yeah. of them got together, put it all in. Durham with Premier Bait stuff. Wasn't yeah, it? exactly. You know, that yeah, stuff. yeah. It's, and it's it got... still works now. Mm. Good bait, baiting up. You know. People don't. I mean, it's difficult now because the lakes are so busy, and you know, you're not allowed to pre-bait a lot of the lakes. But if you keep using the same bait and keep it going and going in, it works for me. Yeah. And uh, it's so just old school, isn't it? It's just yeah. And it works. Yeah. Whatever the reasons, whether it's a high quality or what, you know, it it just it just works. Yeah, it's yeah, just you yeah. know, it just yeah. We, we've noticed it. I've noticed it over the years as well. What was so? What was Dinton like when you first started fishing there? A lot of anglers fishing it. It's always been quite busy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's always been quite busy. Um, not too bad, but because it's quite narrow, you've always got someone like opposite you or whatever and that. But um, I met some lovely people down. I got some good mates for a life, you know, down there and that. And then Simon came along sort of three or four years into me fishing it and was like, did his training there and all that and eventually took it all over. And uh, we become good friends. You see a difference once he took it over? Or the lake? Yeah, the fishery in general. Yeah, he made, he made more vast improvements to the lake. In what way? fish stock um, making sure that there's always backup fish to cover the fish yeah. that had died yeah because um, they don't last forever mm. and Simon made sure that we always had a good stock of fish and um, I mean at one stage it was something like in the 90s there was something like 14 40s and 250s that was one of the best lakes and it had one. to be one of the best lakes in the country yeah by a country but, and that's when I noticed you know your laneys and people like that turning up and, yeah. and not only were they big they were gorgeous mm. you know Mm. And hard earned, so you know. Bruno was a well known one in there, wasn't Yeah, he? that that was a king of the lake for me. That was always the biggest fish in the lake and um and I couldn't leave there till I caught it and I took a week off holiday and I caught it midweek, um, on a harvest moon. And uh yeah, that's one of the memories it stays harvest in. Harvest moon, yeah. Stay yeah. it's forty seven four when I had it and yeah. um it stayed my P B for a long time actually and uh it, um, Sorry, what year was that when you caught that one? There's a question. I don't think it was. I think it was about 2001, something like that, maybe. 2002. Oh, I can't remember. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'd caught a few. I caught my first 40 pounder from Dinton, and uh, and, the, and the, say the bait started working really well. And we just started working our way through the stock, and mm. uh, and my mates were doing really well as well on it. You know, Jason and Harvey, they were catching plenty of fish on it, and we just kept it going in. Mm. Big 24 millers, big donkey chokers. Yeah. You don't, you, you don't. You don't sit. Maybe now we're talking about it on a podcast, you know. And I, I know you spoke about it on the previous podcast, but yeah, like you say, that is a, that is a that's a definite. Uh, I saw a bloke do it years ago. I didn't see a bloke. I, I read about a bloke did it in one of the cart magazines with the big fish mix, the Nutra baits. That was a good bait. And I um, that. yeah, yeah. It was, I used that as yeah. well. That was a good bait. And so we tried it uh, just because this bloke had been very successful, and the lake we were fishing at the time had a lot of bream and tench in it. So we thought, yeah, you can use a bigger hook. You don't get tangles. The baits go out lovely in a catapult, you know, you, you know, accurate baiting and stuff and that, and uh, easier to roll because it was all rolling by hand then. And uh, The only thing with that is, I mean, do you not think you're not holding the fish in the swim for as long when you're doing that? Yeah, you it's a good, your... good shout for that, yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's uh, an argument for that. You just put more in. Hmm. Or do you think what you're saying they get full up quicker or well i mean both actually i mean you know winter time but have you ever known a carp to get full up well they must get full up mustn't they you eventually reckon? i don't know did it go in one end and come out the other end as quickly as it goes in? It go, can, I, mean, it, I mean you land them don't you and then they're crapping it out on the mat yeah i mean it goes they could be through, doing it out in the lake and just yeah yeah then they could be but it's you know uh, you could be fishing over boilers as well as carp crap which is your boilie 
We could all be in the same area. I'll tell you what. Like Bawley Crumb. It, well, no, exactly. No, no, there's a, there's, a, there's a point for that. It would be good, actually, with that underwater stuff, you know, to actually, because that's another thing that we didn't see. It's like actually, you know, putting big baits in there and seeing, mm. you know, seeing that as well. Because I just always thought, was also, a big bait going and racking about in their mouth. It's got to be harder to get rid of than a small bait. Yeah, I think that as well. They're, yeah, they're used yeah. to all their lives getting rid of small... It's, it's too light. It's too easy to come out. Yeah, they're used to p- spitting out twigs and pebbles and stuff like that, aren't they? So when suddenly they want to eat big, yeah, they can't not be as used to spitting it out. Pete must like that as well, doesn't it, if you're using 24 millers and... Uh... He charges more if you uh, if you want 16 millers. In, his normal thing is, uh, if you want 16 millers, buy 18s and peel the fuckers. <laughs> 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 He'd have that printed, <laughs> wouldn't he, on them as well? <laughs> yeah. And if you want 10 millers, he just laughs at you. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't make 10 millers. No, then. no. No, he loves a 20. I'm, I use 22s now because the uh, 24s won't. Because his baits have rolled. They're not perfectly round. They don't go in the throwing sticks. You stick all your bait out, do you? Mainly, yeah. 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 I do spawn sometimes when the seagulls are not a nightmare, but you're yeah. getting about six baits in the spawn, so... So, I mean, are you, are you worried about being super accurate? If I was doing that, that would be flipping. That would be all over the place. I want that. I want to spread it about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm not, not one for these tight baiting situations. See, I just don't feel comfort. I, I like I like tight baiting. Yeah, well, everyone's different, man. That's the beauty of the sport. I like, I like to trying to build a same I know castle. people who like fishing two rods on the same dinner plate. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've yeah. never done that. Never done it. I think, I you're, I think we you're missing at- opportunities. Yeah. What about that margin down there? Well, that's the other thing. I mean, for me, it's like if the, if you've got a nice pile of bait out in front of the swim, they flipping know it's there. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, 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 they know they they know it's there, and it's it's. Uh, Do you it, fish like that in the survey? Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I see. I can understand. That's why it I don't catch the... anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand it on the uh, busy waters, you know, with loads of fish in. I get that. You know, and and I'd, I've no experience of fishing those waters. I don't want any experience of fishing those waters. We, I said before, when um, was it last winter? I think Tom Maker caught 50, 50 off, off fish in 24 hours. Oh. I couldn't think of anything worse. Jeez, no. You wouldn't get it. Well, I couldn't do it. I, could, I would have reeled in. <laughs> I'd need to take a but holiday I don't fish after those that. types of waters. They're not yeah. my, you know. If I've had four fish in a night out of Welly, I'm fucked, you know. Yeah. I've had no sleep the day before and I'm like like a zombie, you know? Now, we went to Oxley's Lake. I've, I've said this before. I mean, I'd, I've, I've not been doing that much fishing recently and I think I caught, I think I had like four bites in um, in, a, in half an hour and it was like, fuck this. I want, you know, this is too much. Yeah. I want this to stop and it did. And then once it did stop, it was like, oh, damn it, why did I think that? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, no, it like is, it's too, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But, but no, I no, I think on a you know on a even on low stock waters. No, I tell you what, when you get them going though, Dean, and you've got that better bait out there, and they really do start getting on it, it's just it's so much fun, mate. But I'd be worried about casting back on their edge as well. No, I just I, I I put three rods out there, and if um, you catch one, you leave it in. Yeah, no, I leave yeah, it in. Yeah, I mean, if you're in that position, I mean, like you with Oxleys or um, yeah. But on all, like, you know, yeah, yeah. I just leave the rods in. And if you get to the last rod and it go, okay, well, that rod needs to go back yeah, out. But, survey, so but, but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it's a bonus. But no, it does. It does happen. And it's, mm. it's, um, but that's the beauty of the sport. And it, everyone's different. Mm. You know, I know people only fish up baits out the bag. They just buy a kilo of boilies and they fish one bottom bait out in that bag. That's all they use. Yeah. And they catch loads. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then you've got the other extremes of people who use loads of bait. George Benos he takes loads of bait of him you know I don't know George I know friends who know him and they say it's unbelievable the amount of bait he catches him not many people catch as many big fish as he does and he catches them everywhere yeah you know yeah and then you've got the people with single baits and all the rest of it it's are you, are you adapted horses for courses isn't it well it must be because otherwise you know there, well, there would be there would be one um, there would be one code for everything wouldn't yeah, there yeah yeah and uh, I've seen it on my own syndicate I've got Harvey fishing pellets in the edge I've got a people a jay fishing out on the lake on boilies, and they you know they all catch loads of fish. Yeah, and it's just you know. Yeah, I used to fish Dinton um, with little John, uh, little John Coxhead. Oh, yeah. mate, he caught some fish. You know, all in the edge, watching them take the bait most of the time. Mm. You know, but he was there every single day, baiting up, just a handful of pellet, handful of pellet. Yeah, and uh, well, was he was he catching? Do you think you can get those multiple hits out of one 
spot no, in the end. You need to so. keep moving around, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's the energetic. I guys mean, John that... John has to fish. Well, I, I I see him on Facebook the other day. Caught a nice twenty pound or something. But John had to fish somewhere local because he's working. I think he's a tiler or so. But every day he was be a, he'd always been a rush. Bit of pellet in the edge, bit of pellet. And he, he took the 80 apart, he took everywhere. Everywhere he's fished, he's taken it apart. But they've all had to be fairly near to where he lives, otherwise yeah, you can't, you do, can't it. do it. Yeah, yeah. But your you're, you're, you're fishing's the same as that as well, I guess, to some... You know, yeah, yeah. Would you, yeah. Um, would you would you go anywhere else at the moment, then, fishing-wise? Um, I've got a couple of things up my sleeve that I've, oh, yeah. I've got a couple of tickets that I couldn't refuse to turn up, and yeah. fish are getting bigger, and... Uh, you you would travel if you needed to then. Yeah, I I do I. I say I would. I don't need to at the moment. Um, I'd travel up to an hour, I suppose. Yeah. Because you've got to remember, I've been, I've done been at work for fifteen hours when I finished to go. God. And yeah. then I've got to drive to the lake. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I start bobbing off and. I didn't realise you said you caught five pound perch and stuff like that as well. So so when when the uh, when the carp fishing's not looking on you. Yeah, I mean this winter I've I've really enjoyed because of lockdown and all the rest of it. I've got back into well, lucky enough where I live, is a chalk stream runs through the village, and um, I've been trotting for grayling and trout and I caught some big dace as way out there and and then a bit of chub fishing, um, and I haven't done it for ages and I've gone back to it this year and, and refined it and. It's like carp fishing. You've got back to refining it, smaller shot, lighter line, different floats, and your catch rate is going up. You know, it's, uh, it's been really enjoyable. When I love your pike fishing and a bit of perch fishing. It, it, did you go back to all of that stuff after the carp fishing, or have you, have you always No, done? I was. Um, I used to pike fish a lot when I was younger. Every winter I used to go. Um, but the trouble was with me, I did a lot of winters on Dinton, which was I could count on one hand how many fish to caught in 10 years of carp fishing winters on Dinan. it's not a winter carp water um, it used to always annoy me that you'd fish all through the winter blanking maybe one carp and it'd be a 20 pound common or something and then just as it starts to warm up in March you'd get everyone come back and then someone would get a 35 pound and you'd be like well you've been all winter you can't come back and catch these fish and then it'd be closed just as they're waking up Yeah, it was the same every year but in the end I I got back into my pike fishing and loved it and uh Mainly pike, and I, I only stopped pike fishing in the winter when I got the ticket for wazing because of the parrot had, you know, had been caught in the winter a few times. So I thought, well, it's worth carrying on for that fish. And yeah, do you find it keeps the um, the appetite for carp fishing as well when you're? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I would have carried on carp fishing this winter on Welly because it was working. If it had been crap, then I'd have popped off and gone. I found out about another thirty pound pike this winter. Which I'm issuing to go have a go at next winter, but I'm thinking if the carp's going well on welly, then uh, then it's going to be a job to pull so off. So how but how many of those? So how many of those those big ones have you caught out welly? How, how much longer do you? I mean, it's an, it's an expensive ticket as well, isn't it? Mate, it's an expensive ticket, but I've always worked hard. Yeah, I've always worked, earned decent money, and I don't do anything else in my life. I like going out for meals with the wife, and we go on nice holidays, but I don't. People work it out to how much a day, especially when I'm only doing one night a week. They're going, "Oh, have you worked out how much it is for each night you go?" I don't give a shit, mm. you know. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't drive around in flash cars or anything like that. Mm. You know, I love my fishing, and uh, if it's what it is, it is what it is. So you think you have got a few years left fishing on that? I can't see myself dropping out for a long time. I might even leave it alone and come back to it later on, and because it's local, it's just down the road. Do many of the members do that on there? I know people have dropped off the last couple of years and as soon as they've dropped off they won't get back on again. And they've gone back out to the real world. Yeah. And they're like, God. The they're so busy now, isn't it? You know? Mm. They've gone off back to these Hortons and places like that because, you know, you want to catch big fish. And then they realise they're putting buckets behind buckets to get swims and man, that's not me. No. I'd rather fish a smaller fish. I can't be doing with crowded lakes. Yeah, I've heard I've heard on lakes, you know, people are putting buckets in the swim before you've you, before you even like yeah. in the middle of the night behind yeah. swims lucky enough for me Wazen wasn't like that when I was on there it wasn't like it at all um, I think it got busy just before the parrot died but um, yeah that's about but Mark's got his head screwed on there he's got it all worked out they're only allowed to do so many hours then they've got to move swims and all that yeah so, uh, yeah what about Black Swan Lake now then did you did you ever fish that one yeah I did but it's a very I don't want to slag it off because uh, 
the fish is stunning and uh, and Simon's me Do you remember that one that Mickey put the picture up of? Tony? Yeah, I do. That was a lovely cut. Yeah, 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 yeah. But because I work nights, and I'm always knackered when I get down the lake, it's very busy with public walking around. Um, and I was constantly getting woken up with people's dogs in me swim and stuff like that. I did four nights on there and said, I ain't coming back. <laughs> I said, it's not a bit of me. That's quite public, isn't it? It's, it's it is. And, and, it's, and Denton's got busier and busier and busier with people. And... Um, it's, you know, don't get me wrong. If I didn't work nights, then I'd put up with it because the fish are stunning. I mean, they've seen those linears in there and mm, stuff. That's you know, it, Absolutely yeah. amazing looking fish. Yeah. And like Mickey's on. Now, Mickey's a mate of mine. Mickey's been on there for a few years and that, and, you know, he's he's, he's loving it. I quite liked it out there, actually, going across onto that, yeah. that island. Well, that wasn't there uh, when I fished it. I, I think I fished it the second year it had been open. Um, but, yeah, and I, I couldn't even have... You couldn't even go for a piss in the bush. You know, you had a piss in the bottle in your bivvy. <laughs> and I was getting woken up all hours of the night because it's changed now to be fair I haven't I should because I keep saying to Simon I should put my name down on the list to get get on there because of the fish and now um, the park is closed at night so people can't park they used to be able to park out on the road and walk in and the car park used to be open but now it's closed so maybe it's completely different now and um, the public's not walking around all night, mm. which is probably the case. Mm. And probably I'm shooting myself in the foot and I should get back on there because they are stunning fish. Yeah, I know. It sounds like the one now that people... You've got that double row still in the the, the Whites one, like, I mean, yeah, it? Yeah, I caught that. As, as, I caught that first time it went over 40. Yeah, and how big is it? Is it it's about 50-something 50 50, 50 now, 50 isn't it? Pounder. Triple row. Yeah, triple yeah. row, triple yeah. row, that's it, yeah. Yeah, that's a stunning fish. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had all the big ones out of there before I left, um, and uh, they're stunning fish. You know what I mean? Gorgeous looking. Well, what fish. killed what, what killed the fish off in there in the end? Just it's, old age. Just, it was so yeah. they just gradually pe- yeah, petered yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a weird one with fish, isn't it? You get some that grow fast and die young, and there's, you know, there's never any. There was never any oxygen crashes or anything like that when I was on there. We had that um, when it flooded that year. Um, was it two thousand and seven? It fished really bad the next year. And the oh, do you remember that the flood in that? Yeah. That was in July, wasn't it? Yeah, it? yeah, I was fishing that night when. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, I remember that. I was yeah. sat on um, the, not the riverbank side, the other side, and I thought, "What's that silver thing on the edge of the lake over there?" There's water coming in from the river. And the weird thing was, it had rained like really heavily two days before. It hadn't rained that day. It and rained so, on the Friday, and suddenly it? The, it was it was a Friday that it was. I yeah. just remember because it was so torrential. It took a while to... Yeah, yeah, and suddenly the river just got coming into the lake. And then the carp started boshing where the river was coming in. And I'm going to pack up and move, get round there. And then it it was coming in about three different places. And then Simon came around and said to everyone, you're going to have to get off the site because we're going to be trapped on here the way this Mm. is going. Mm. And it it was annoying because, yet again, we'd, we'd baited really heavily. And poor old Roy joined us that year on the baiting team and of course he was rubbing his hands I'm going to get in the baiting team with you lot you know you've caught loads of fish out of Denton can't wait <laughs> and Roy's a really if he gets the bit between his teeth he's bang on you know as I said to you he caught the crop this year first time he'd been there to the lake but he he um he was he was wading up the path to pre-bait because the lake was so flooded parking my up, well, up to here to pre-bait and it just killed the lake that flood water. I don't what, don't know what came in off the fields or anything, but it, it just fished crap that year. That's 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 what it. And how long did it take to start fishing? The following year, it took a year to sort of more than a year, I think. Really, yeah, more than a year. All the weed died. It all went black at the bottom in there. And yeah, I've not, I've known it affect certain areas of lakes as well. If if, if you've yeah. got like quite a segmented lake, and if it if it floods, it can be it could be a few years before. Yeah, it, yeah, no, it was, it was just a really bad season and. That was the kiss of death for me, really. It fished really bad. I think we lost a couple of fish, a um, couple of the ones I wanted, and I just thought enough's enough. And uh, there was mm. a couple in there that I never caught that I came close to catching. That um, like the linear, Bernie's linear was a stunning fish. I netted it a couple of times, and I never forget. Um, I've been baiting it in the winter, and um, I went to go up there to fish and. The, one of my staff members come down really ill when I couldn't get up there. And uh, uh, I can't think of his name now. He's one of Dave Lane's mates. Um, I went up there to see how they were doing because I, you know, I wanted to put a bit more bait in. If I couldn't fish, I'd put some bait in. And he was in the swim. 
And I looked at the lines and I thought, fuck, he's bang on as well. <laughs> and he caught Bernie's linear that night in Did the you? snow and it was 47 pound. <laughs> You've got to give that, that to hurt. Him. That hurt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's dedication as well. He that's was a good angler, yeah. don't get me wrong. He yeah. was a very good angler. I can't remember his name now. He's a lovely bloke. He used to work at Heathrow Airport when Elaney's mates. And um, yeah, he, he, um, he was catching them out there anyway, don't get me wrong. And he didn't know I'd been putting bait in there. But yeah, because well, I, couldn't, I couldn't get down there that night. <laughs> that was the one that got away. That was the one that got away. That's I remember another night, uh, February, I was fishing down there and uh, there was me, my mate, uh, oh, Jim, and then there was Bernie fishing, and didn't as I say every fish was hard earned and didn't. And, and I had a run in the night and I had twenty six pound com. I was chuffed to bits, you know, February. And I phoned Jim up in the morning. I said I got twenty six pound common, and he said I got Bernie's. I said I know Bernie's next door to you. No, Bernie. I, <laughs> I know Bernie's next door to you. He said no, I've got caught Bernie's. Really? How big? Forty seven and a half pound. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant, I'll come around and take pictures and then can you come around and take these 26 of me? You know, like I say, it wasn't meant to be. And, and Mojave, who fished it with us on the bay, I think he caught it three times. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. You can't you know? catch them all, Dean, can no, you? No, 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 no. So, well, he starts again now anyway, so... Yeah, I'm down at this Sunday. Um, yeah, back to it. I think we had this lovely weather now and then we I think it's snowing on Monday. So yeah, it's it's getting colder, getting again, colder isn't it? again, so. Um is, is your mate turning up on there as well at some point soon? He will be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he will be. Yeah. yeah. To terrorize them all again. So all refreshed anyway, ready to go again now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've well, hopefully they remember. What's the new toys during COVID because you oh, couldn't yeah. help yourself. <laughs> what, new rods. <laughs> new reels. New reels. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. Yeah, can't wait. It, it, it's christening Christian new fishing gear, isn't it? Well, this is it. It's nice christening new gear. And I say that's the thing about only going once a week. I've never burnt out. Yeah. You know? I've done all these other things like the judo and the motocross and and the job. and uh, But every that one night a week, I've looked forward to it every week like Christmas. And that's what's kept me going for 40 years. I've known loads of people who've done, been flat out at it, you know, stopped working and just gone fishing. I don't even go now. Yeah. You know, burnt out. Oh, I see it, see it all the time. Yeah. Or yeah, well, they blame it on their marriage falling apart. No, you know, I, when we used to fish Dinton, I used to know blokes would get there on a Friday, fish all weekend and go home Sunday night. They had families. Mm. And you're thinking, you know, mm. you've worked all week and you're fishing all weekend. And then you find out it's all gone tits up and they blame the fishing, you know. <laughs> you're the one going, <laughs> mate. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, I know. You've got to get a balance of it all. Well, you've got to keep hold of that missus as well, don't you? I've got to keep hold of my missus. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, no, you've got to keep her happy. And like I say, have a good balance. And, you know, like I say, you 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 can you can fish then until, is, is, you know, until you can physically not go fishing anymore. Then, yeah, instead yeah. Of exactly. being... I mean, at the moment, I've, not, I've never been in a better place. Yeah. You know, I'm married to a lovely girl. She's got a lovely stepson, Dylan. Uh, my stepson, Dylan, um, he's as good as gold. In, in fact, he's talking about going fishing now, so I might have to take him a couple of times. Oh, I'll uh, be on the cards. Yeah, then. yeah, he's 25, so he's not, uh, I think he's 25. He might not be 20, about 23, I think. But, um, yeah, so that might be on the cards. Well, I think this podcast is a good example of someone who can go fishing, be really successful, and just enjoy life as well as, well as that. Yeah, you've got to, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, as you say, you've got to get a balance. And uh, don't take it too seriously. You only fish at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. No, listen to that. <laughs> Dean Fletcher, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. You're welcome. I've re really enjoyed it. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the Thinking Tackle Podcast.